do we have all commissioners present? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right, I'm gonna call the Anderson County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Uh, the regular meeting for Monday, August 17, 2020. Um, everybody's checked in, I believe, as was told on their iPad, all present. Um, next, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, would anybody like to lead us in prayer tonight? I, I thought I'd ask. I'll lead us in prayer. Well, who's yes, that? It, it's just me. I think uh, since this may be your last um, time as chair to lead us, I think that would be the fitting thing to happen. I'll be happy to do so. Thank you, Commissioner Denenberg. And who would like to lead us in the uh, pledge? Commissioner Mead, the man of the hour. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, bow your heads, please. Heavenly Father, thank you again for this day that you've given us all. As we uh, take on the county's business tonight, we ask for your continued guidance, uh, your grace, your faith. We need those things to make our county prosper in ways that would be pleasing to you, Lord, and to all the folks that live in this county and surrounding county for that matter. Lord, we also ask that as we recognize Suicide Prevention Month here in Anderson County, that we we hope that anyone thinking of this unthinkable act that we, we are able to reach them and let them know that they're loved. And whether it might not be shown every day that there is folks in this county that would be happy to lend a hand, lend an ear, lend a heart, and listen. And uh, we just hope that those folks, when they're struggling, will reach to you, Lord, first and foremost, and ask for your help, because we all know you can help all things, Lord. Lord, we thank you uh, for this county and all of our leaders and all the people in it. Uh, we pray for those that are sick, whether they're touched by COVID or any other disease, we ask that you touch them and heal them and make them have comfort. And uh, for those who have loved ones, Lord, whether it be the COVID or um, suicide or any other type of unfortunate death that you touch them and let them know that they're loved and uh, keep them, let's all keep them in our hearts and prayers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go ahead, Commissioner Mead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, if you would all please uh, face the flag in whatever room you're in, or if you don't have a flag visible, use the one on the screen. And salute, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Mead, appreciate that. Um, next is gonna be appearance of citizens. If there's any citizens in the uh, courtroom there in room 312 or anyone that's called in that has an issue they'd like to discuss that's not on the agenda. You, you may tune in right now, just speak up, state your name, your address. If it's something that's not on the agenda, please, uh, you'll have three minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna open up the floor at this time for any citizens that would like to speak on any issue here in the county. Brian, do you have any knowledge of anyone that has any issues or anybody in the courtroom that'd like to speak? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'm sorry, my pad isn't working properly. If it would be all right with you and the board, uh, we've requested General Clark to be able to make his address uh, during this portion of our meeting instead of on the uh, announcements from 6 to 6.30, if that'll be pleasing to you, sir. Yes, sir, Commissioner Val is gonna add him on the next item under approval and correction agendas. I thought once we approve the correction and agendas, we could add him under 4A, which would be before the committee reports item five, 
Uh, I've already written in my agenda, District Attorney General Clark, David, David Clark, uh, 4A. So it'll be as soon as we approve the correction and approvals of the consent and regular agenda. That's okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. No problem. Any, any citizens anywhere? Uh, Josh, do you see anybody in there that is wanting to speak? No one in the courtroom, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, hearing none, we're gonna move on to the next portion, which is approval and correction of agendas. So uh, moved. Motion to, motion to approve the consent agenda, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Mead. That's correct. Do I have a second? Let's try to use our pad. We'll have to use our pads. If you can fix the pads to where we can, we got to document every vote, I guess. Thank you, sir. We got a motion by Commissioner Meade to approve the consent agenda, seconded by Commissioner Meredith. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Uh, Commissioner yes, Treason, do you have something, sir? Yeah, I'd like to move the ADA committee report from the consent agenda to the regular agenda. We have a, so that'd be a, an amendment to the motion, I guess, since we already have a motion on the floor. Uh, would that be okay with you, uh, Commissioner Mead? I guess we'll have to vote on the amendment as well. Or well, we actually, just... the, the consent agenda didn't discuss that at all. Um, it only had the Suicide Prevention Awareness Month uh, resolution. And so I think when we do, when we make, we'll make it a, an amendment to the, the regular agenda to add the, the uh, that in there, I would think. Okay, so, but the original motion on the floor right now is to approve the consent agenda. You're correct, Commissioner Mead. I think we'll, we'll, but before we approve it, we approve the consent agenda, it'll just push through. So I think what Commissioner Creasy's asking is we take the ADA off of the consent agenda and place it on to the regular agenda. Oh. And when we go to the next motion, we can add it then. But he's respectfully requested yeah. to remove from the consent. So I would, I would, I would add that to my motion. Okay, and uh, Commissioner Meredith, you okay with that, sir? That was my yes. intention. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Commissioner Creasy. Okay, so we have a motion to approve uh, taking out the ADA. Uh, any other discussion on that item? Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the board and approve the consent agenda with the removal of the ADA oversight, which will be moved to the regular agenda here shortly. So we need the board up, Brian, or maybe I need to vote. Board's up, we just need to vote. Ready to do whatever you need, Tracy. I mean, we just need to hit, we got to vote on this. We got a motion, we got a second now. There you go, thank you, sir, got it. We're all good now, thank you. Mr. Jameson is the only one we're waiting on. Having a small technical issue. No problem. If he would like to do a voice vote, he certainly can until we get that issue resolved. I just barely got my, my voting pad done before we came on myself, but updated late. He's voting yes. Okay, thank you. So we have uh, 15 yes. Uh, motion passes unanimously for consent agenda. Next is the regular agenda. Again, please use your iPad so we can track everything. Clear the board here, Brian, so we can. A motion for the regular agenda. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Commissioner McCamey. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we suspend the rules. Our rules state that uh, we are to elect the chairman and appoint committees at our September meeting, and we need to suspend the rules and add that uh, to the agenda to uh, put that off for a month. Don't we do that in September? Yes, we, our rules state that we, that the first, first meeting in September. Uh, so are, we, 
apologize, Commissioner McCain, are, are you wanting to suspend them next month or now? Well, no, we usually meet in August and have them ready for the uh, September meeting. But uh, I, would, I would like to just go ahead and make sure that we get that uh, on the agenda to uh, either either do it next month or uh, or not do it, whichever one we want to do if we're doing it. Yes. If, we're, if we're going to do virtual, I would rather put it off till we can meet in person. Uh, my understanding, Commissioner McCain, and I appreciate you bringing it up and I sent out an email this morning, but my understanding is that the Governor Lee is just going to let the virtual executive order expire on the 31st of this month. And he's expecting, and, and what I've heard from the Tennessee County Commissioners Association, that we'll go back to in-person meetings starting next month. So I've taken the position that we'll just continue business as normal, and next month we'll take up the uh, business of electing the new chair, vice chair, and a parliamentarian. And, um, that email I sent out this morning, I've asked everyone that would like to stay on committees, switch committees, drop committees, and let uh, our deputy chief know, uh, Annette Pruitt, and uh, she's starting to take that information in. So the nominating can meet the first week of uh, September to take care of all that business. Okay, then my motion would be to approve the regular agenda. Thank you, and I appreciate you bringing it up because <clears throat> There was some discussion in operations about doing it differently, but it uh, doesn't sound like virtual is going to continue from what I've heard. Okay, so we've got a motion by Commissioner McCain to approve the regular agenda, uh, seconded by Commissioner Fritz. The second, yes. And, we uh, need to add the ADA Oversight Committee to some part in the new agenda. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner McCain, would you mind allowing that addition to your yes. motion? Thank you, and Commissioner yes. Fritz, would you be okay with yes. that? Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you. Is there any other items we can add before we take action on the regular agenda and we, we vote? Is there any other items that need to be discussed on the regular agenda before us? Um, I've already made a spot. I guess we can, if somebody wants to make it official and add it to this motion, uh, Commissioner McCamey and Commissioner Fritz, uh, under 4A, District Attorney General Clark, David Clark, and that way we can get it in the minutes. If that's okay, we'll make that amendment to the regular agenda if you're okay with that. That'll be fine with me. Thank you. Fine. Is there uh, any other items? Yes, sir, Chairman. That, yeah. Uh, my motion to move it to the regular agenda of the ADA committee report, mm -hmm. that would uh, put it automatically under number item number 10, committees and board reports. So I'm assuming that you have made that item five. Uh, yes, I could be. Let's make it, uh, if you're okay with For, it. Uh, 4B. Make, yeah, we can make it. Make it. 4B, if you'd like, or under five. To, to Commissioner Creasy's point, committee reports are under five. There's purchasing budget. 4B or 5C, okay. whatever your choice is. Commissioner Creasy. Yeah, that's fine. Number five. 5C, we'll make it. Okay. ADA. I got it. Any other items, Commissioners? Mayor, did you have anything or Jay to add? No, sir. Okay. No, sir, I do not. Thank you. Thank you. Anything under purchasing or that we need to add? I think we're good to go. Okay. Let's go to the board and vote. Again, this is to pass the regular agenda, add the ADA, and also add District Attorney David Clark. Uh, David Clark will speak next as soon as we're done here. Just you, Commissioner Creasy. Thank you, sir. Motion passes 16 yes, zero no's. Thank you, Commissioners. Next will be, uh, as we stated, District Attorney General David Clark. Mr. Clark, you have the floor, sir. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission. It's a pleasure to be with you and I appreciate you uh, allowing me a few moments uh, this evening to talk to you and I'll be brief. I frankly don't have a tremendous amount to report, but uh, felt like it was an appropriate time to check in with you with regard to our pending opioid uh, lawsuit efforts against the opioid manufacturers. Uh, just briefly, uh, to uh, sort of refresh your recollection, we had approached you, uh, gosh, it's probably been a couple of years ago now, um, with the offer to initiate a lawsuit against the opioid manufacturers under the Drug Dealer Liability Act. This was a, a relatively new uh, law and an innovative approach to trying to hold the opioid manufacturers responsible to the citizens of Anderson County and other areas of the state of Tennessee for the damage they've done to our state and our citizens. At that time, there was another law firm, actually several law firms sort of courting Anderson County filing a lawsuit. Um, they wanted you to join the multi-district uh, litigation that was pending in Ohio. And um, I was grateful that you uh, allowed us the opportunity to go forward with our suit. And we've done that and it's been pending since that. You will, you may also recall that the um, Drug Dealer Liability Act included some innovative ways to hold these companies responsible, included some additional damages that otherwise would not be recoverable, and potentially gave us in Tennessee a stronger position in the event that any of these manufacturers went into bankruptcy court. Uh, because the Drug Dealer Liability Act is born of criminal penalties instead of civil penalties. And as a result, uh, puts us in a potentially different position under the bankruptcy code. Our argument would be, should any of them file bankruptcy, that any damages were still recoverable even through bankruptcy as sort of a super priority above and beyond any civil claims. As we have proceeded on with our case, uh, the cases in Tennessee filed by the district attorneys, there are 16 other district attorneys who are part of this effort with me, are divided into three lawsuits. The first one pending in the Tri-Cities area, Ayers in the metropolitan Knoxville area, and then another in the Middle Tennessee area. That's relevant because uh, as we went forward with the Drug Dealer Liability Act, the first court to consider the argument that the defendant manufacturers made that the Drug Dealer Liability Act did not apply came about in Upper East Tennessee. The judge there concluded that the district attorneys were right and the Drug Dealer Liability Act allowed us to file the sort of lawsuit that we filed. The second court to consider that issue was a court in Campbell County uh, which was the location of filing our suit along with the other suits by the Knoxville metropolitan counties. That judge concluded that the district attorneys were wrong and that the Drug Dealer Liability Act did not allow us to file the type of suit that we had filed. The um, case in Upper East Tennessee continued forward and the case from Campbell County involving the Knoxville areas went to the Tennessee Court of Appeals. At the Tennessee Court of Appeals level, the three judge panel unanimously agreed that the district attorneys were right and reversed the Campbell County trial judge who said we were wrong. And so now that matter is before the Tennessee Supreme Court. And we have briefed all of these issues before the Supreme Court and we are awaiting a decision from the Supreme Court um, on the Drug Dealer Liability Act. It was inevitable that this issue was going to end up in the Tennessee Supreme Court, one way or the other, whether after appeal or before appeal. We're actually very grateful that it has procedurally worked out this way because we're able to get guidance from the courts uh, prior to trial. So uh, all three suits are pending. The lawsuit in Upper East Tennessee is the next case scheduled in the United States for trial against the drug manufacturers. That's scheduled for September 21st. 
Some of you may recall that a lawsuit was filed in Oklahoma uh, against primarily Johnson & Johnson, not one of our defendants. Um, and that case went to trial and there was a very substantial verdict reached in Oklahoma. I believe the Tennessee case is currently scheduled to be the next case heard in the nation. Um, currently, we are preparing for trial and expecting the trial to go forward with regard to at least one of the defendants. Another of the defendants is currently negotiating uh, with the DAs regarding settlement and other defendants have filed bankruptcy. You are notably probably aware of Purdue Pharmaceutical, the manufacturers of OxyContin having filed bankruptcy. Uh, and I think we've got one or two others that have filed bankruptcy as well. We have retained uh, one of, if not the finest bankruptcy councils in America, uh, where this case is pending in New York. And uh, we are proceeding with our arguments there that the Drug Dealer Liability Act gives Tennessee district attorneys and their local governments and claimants a higher priority than any other claim uh, by any other uh, plaintiff in America. And so we are waiting for that resolution. Frankly, um, we, we don't have high hopes that the original federal bankruptcy court will rule in our favor. And that is because the party filing bankruptcy gets to choose where they're going to file. And regarding large corporations, they have plenty of opportunities to choose the most favorable place to file bankruptcy. And we believe that that's what uh, Purdue Pharmaceutical has done. This court, however, is, uh, uh, I'm led to believe, frequently overturned at the appellate level. And so we, as we started, we continue to expect this to be a long grind as we go through all the various courts and all the various levels of appeal. Uh, but our original contemplation was that we might drive some of these manufacturers into bankruptcy, and that's what's happened. We hoped that the Drug Dealer Liability Act would give us a priority above everyone else, and we still hope that that's the case. We don't have that answer yet. We believed initially that the Drug Dealer Liability Act would allow us to file the kind of lawsuit that we filed. One trial judge agreed, one trial judge disagreed. The Tennessee Court of Appeals unanimously agreed with us. So. If we're counting judges, we're four to one right now in favor of the approach that we have taken. But what really matters is what the Supreme Court says. And when the Supreme Court speaks on this issue, that will probably be the final word. So the way this is procedurally worked out has really sort of given us the advantage of getting early advice from the Tennessee Supreme Court as how they view the Drug Dealer Liability Act. Aside from that, this has worked out exactly as I would have and did predict. It's going to be a long, complicated course with lots of victories and probably some setbacks and defeats along the way. The point will be to try and do some justice and bring some resources back to Anderson County as part of this process. And I, I'm very happy with where we are and think things have progressed very well for us. As an aside, the other option that was available to Anderson County was to join the, the Ohio multi-district litigation. It's gone nowhere. Nothing has been done since last you heard about that case. And um, on the other hand, we have taken discovery of millions of documents. We have taken hundreds of depositions in our case across at last count, I believe 31 different states. And so uh, we're taking the fight to the manufacturers wherever they are across the country. And uh, we have even been engaged in, in doing some international work, uh, trying to recover assets or negotiate the recovery of assets that have been taken out of the United States and litigating with uh, manufacturers uh, from Germany and Israel. So this, this is a, a huge effort. And I would tell you now what I told you then, the, the road ahead is still long and complicated, but uh, I thought you were doing an update of where we stood and um, of course, bring information back to you as we develop more information. At one point in time, a few months ago, um, 
we were in some pretty serious settlement negotiations with more of the manufacturers. Um, they, uh, they were interested in paying a very modest amount of money and we weren't interested in accepting a very modest amount of money. Um, so those settlements uh, broke down and we're continuing forward with litigation. There is a, a complicating factor and um, it has been a source of concern to us uh, across uh, Middle and East Tennessee. The Tennessee Attorney General has pursued litigation and is part of that multi-district litigation in Ohio. And um, I'm trying to be careful in the words I choose. We, we're concerned about the accuracy of the information that is flowing out to other Tennessee cities and counties. And um, we're glad that uh, you have taken the path you have. We think you're on the right path. Uh, the Attorney General was in some settlement negotiations indicating that he spoke for the entire state of Tennessee and all of its local governments. Um, and had proposed a settlement. Actually, he had accepted the, the first offer that uh, the manufacturers had made. And, and it's my understanding that settlement offer would have, for instance, resulted in about $500 a year uh, to one of the Tennessee plaintiff counties for, I think, 14 years. And as the DA and uh, one of my brothers in the 13th district uh, responded to them, that would not be enough to buy the body bags to bury the people they were killing. And uh, so uh, we're, we're in a fight and we're in a fight for a long haul. And if, uh, as things change, I'll be back to you with more information. And as trial approaches, that could change. Um, we may have a settlement to talk about before the September 20, excuse me, the uh, October 21 trial date. Sorry, September 21 trial date. So if, if that happens at the last hour, as it often does with trials, I'll be giving that information to you just as soon as I get it. And I'll be happy to try and address any questions you may have. Thank you, uh, General Clark. Any questions for Mr. Clark? Must be doing a great job, Dave. Uh, no questions. Oh, thank you. Appreciate your time. Okay. Wait a minute. We got we got somebody here. We got uh, Commissioner Scott. Go ahead. Uh, if you'd like to speak, right. commissioners, hit your right to speak button on your iPad. Go ahead, Commissioner Scott. Thank you, um, General Clark. Because we're the main vein of the crossroads of of I forty and I seventy five, I've had several people ask where we stand with regards to these drug transports that are going east and west and north and south. Um, you know, because of the opioid ordeal, that as well as you know what's going on with the illegal immigrants. They were bringing it up from um, Mexico and so forth and or coming down from you know michigan and um whatnot so is there any chance that you can brief us on where we stand with um policing our community sure i'll be i'll be happy to and and you're right to point out as we did when we uh, applied to the White House for designation as a Haida County and in the funding of our special project uh, that has resulted in Anderson County uh, receiving federal funds for our crime task force, that we, we did represent uh, a rural county with, with uh, close proximity to two major interstate systems. Of those two, I-75 is clearly the more important and a substantial portion of the drugs that end up in Anderson County or that travel through Anderson County on their way north uh, come down that I-75 corridor. And we have some drugs that are headed north on I-75 and uh, others that uh, sometimes come south on I-75. Currently, uh, methamphetamine is probably the most substantial drug uh, impacting Anderson County. In the When I took office uh, 14 years ago, Anderson County led the state in methamphetamine laboratories where we were making our own methamphetamine. 
in Tennessee was the first or second state in the nation, oftentimes trading places with Missouri in terms of methamphetamine problems. We've been very effective with the help of the legislature and law enforcement community uh, here in Anderson County shutting down labs. I don't know the last time we have found a meth lab in Anderson County, the kinds of explosions, fires, and contamination that are associated with the labs. But uh, when we shut the labs down, there were already a lot of methamphetamine addicts. And that's a demand, and that demand uh, has found a supply. And so now they're bringing methamphetamine in, manufactured in Mexico, uh, in super labs, and it's a higher quality, quality methamphetamine. And it's typically transported uh, by Hispanic gangs uh, or cartels uh, as far north as either Atlanta or Dalton, Georgia. And then uh, folks from my area will drive down I-75, pick it up at those locations and bring it north. That's true of Anderson County. It's true of Kingsport or Johnson City. It's, it's, it's true of the Virginia uh, area and, and on up that I-75 corridor. The same is true of cocaine. Uh, but frankly, cocaine is something we're not seeing quite as much. But most of it is distributed uh, to Atlanta and then north from there. We have had some that has been uh, reaching Anderson County through Memphis on I-40, but I-75 is the bigger risk. Uh, with regard to pills and heroin, originally uh, heroin was coming south on I-75 from Detroit. And that was a period of time when heroin was uh, supplied out of Asia, oftentimes to Europe, uh, then to the uh, Dearborn, Detroit, Michigan area, and then down from there to uh, the Knoxville, Anderson County area. That has increasingly changed. And uh, as the Mexican drug cartels realized that marijuana was being legalized in America and that they were losing that market share and profit center for them, they converted their uh, marijuana fields to poppy fields. And now as a result, most of our heroin uh, comes from Mexico, and it has replaced for them, uh, for, for the cartels, I mean, the, the income that they lost uh, when Americans started legalizing marijuana. So now our heroin comes up I-75 uh, as well. In terms of combating that, that's something we're working hard on every day. We uh, primarily entrust the crime task force with that job. The Crime Task Force works with the DEA, the FBI, uh, the ATF. We have a permanent ATF agent in Anderson County. Uh, we have just added the TBI to our local crime task force. And uh, we have a lot of resources that we bring to bear to combat that problem. Uh, but clearly we have a number of addicts that remain in Anderson County and those addicts are demanding the supply and we try and make it more difficult to obtain. Uh, we try and make it more expensive to obtain, uh, while at the same time uh, trying to find treatment and incarceration for those people that are creating the demand. We cannot incarcerate our way out of this problem. And so we're trying to engage in smart policing. We're trying to be effective in our use of taxpayer dollars. Uh, but but we have to approach it from a multidisciplinary approach. Thank you, Commissioner uh, General Clark. Commissioner Creasy. You may be muted still, Commissioner Creasy. Right, I was still muted. I was so anxious to speak, I forgot to unmute the mic. Uh, Mr. Clark, the, since the lawsuit and all the attention that that's brought up in discussion, have you seen uh, any decrease in the amount of overdose deaths and arrests or, or less issues, family issues that we're having um, from the publicity, I guess, of the lawsuit? Has there been a decrease or is it steady or has there been an increase? What's your evaluation? Sure. Uh, 
actually the abuse of prescription opioid drugs, the so-called diversion of opioid drugs from legitimate right. pharmaceutical distribution to illegal use has decreased. It peaked in 2014. Uh, the TBI lab has seen actually a huge decrease in opioid cases or, or, or opioids to be tested. We're running about one third the number of opioids in Tennessee today than we were in 2014. So we've been very effective uh, with some of the legislative efforts that we have taken and, and pushed for through the legislature to uh, create databases to stop doctor shopping and uh, pharmaceutical shopping, to pr uh, prosecute folks that are forging prescriptions. All of those sorts of things, along with our, our public awareness campaigns, seem to have had a great impact at reducing the number of opioids. The, pr the problem is, 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 is so complicated, though, because as we created opioid addicts, and we made opioids more difficult and expensive to obtain, they began to turn to opiates, the original uh, source of that type of drug. And so th that was what created the market for heroin that the Sinaloa cartel and other uh, Mexican cartels were quick to recognize and act upon. So as we have stopped, or not stopped, but as we see a decrease in opioid uh, abuse and we see an increase in heroin abuse, we have actually seen an, seen an increase in overdose deaths. And um, Anderson County does a better job, perhaps than anywhere else in Tennessee, uh, at identifying the... Um, the source of overdose deaths and the, the nature and uh, manner of death. And we have a wonderful um, arrangement with our uh, forensic examiner and coroner uh, medical examiner's office to help us with that. As a result, we get great data, uh, but that great data tells a sad story. And the, the overwhelming takeaway from that right now is that fentanyl is incorporated in with other drugs and fentanyl is so powerful, uh, 50 times more powerful than morphine that, uh, that the equivalent of four grains of sand, an amount of fentanyl smaller than Abraham Lincoln's nose on a penny is a fatal dose. And so as fentanyl gets mixed in with heroin and sometimes with other drugs, um, if the supplier doesn't mix it thoroughly or they put just a few micrograms too much of fentanyl in the dose that they are selling, it can be fatal. And we, we are seeing a significant number of overdose deaths. And usually it is what we call mixed drug toxicity. It'll come back with cocaine and fentanyl, heroin and fentanyl, uh, or, or some other combination, including fentanyl. So opioid abuse is down but the opioid addicts that were created in Anderson County and across the state of Tennessee and the nation in earlier years are continuing to need to fix that habit. And they're doing so with opiates. And as they've turned to opiates, they are exposing themselves to fentanyl and that's killing. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you're on the public part of our meeting. Uh, or a regular commission meeting. So uh, those watching can have the information you're giving. Thank you so much. So many of our Anderson County families have been affected by that, this abuse. And, and thank you for what you're doing in the Sheriff's Department. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Creasy. Uh, Commissioner Anderson. Chairman. Uh, General Clark, I've got a two-part question, and the first part's maybe a little naive, but what what is the purpose of the, of the the dealers putting fentanyl in the drugs if it's so lethal that it could potentially kill them? Handling it and is almost certainly going to kill the uh, the people who use it. And then the second part is 
since it's so dangerous to touch and handle what um what are the what are the precautions that our law enforcement are using to uh, deal with a crime scene? Do they have the adequate protection and equipment here locally to do that? Is there something that we need to provide for them? Thank you. Thank you. Those are both good questions. Let me address the second second question first. Um, it, it is very dangerous. It is, um, the fentanyl was originally prescribed as a um, cancer drug and it was, it was prescribed in patches so that it would be absorbed transdermally through the skin. And, and that just illustrates that it is capable of crossing that membrane. And so if you just touch it, it can kill you. Uh, it also can be absorbed through the lungs if it's inhaled. And so we do have to be careful. Uh, our officers, our, our normal officers are not equipped to handle it. Current advice from the TBI and other uh, national law enforcement agencies is that if there is suspected fentanyl, that officers should not try and submit it to the lab without assistance. And so when we encounter fentanyl, uh, our officers are, are donning the same sort of uh, gear that you might have associated with methamphetamine labs. They're wearing oxygen tanks, uh, white outfits, thick gloves, full respiration hoods, things of that nature. We, uh, we now in Anderson County have uh, obtained a grant for a new device that allows us to field test these substances. And uh, oftentimes it can detect fentanyl in the field, but but it's best if our deputies and police officers back away from any substances that they suspect could contain fentanyl uh, and allow the CTF experts to come in and, and process that, uh, that scene and bag that evidence for analysis. Uh, unfortunately, though, we don't know what drugs do and don't contain fentanyl. And so um, just about any powdery substance um, could, could contain fentanyl. Now, as to your first question, why would dealers incorporate fentanyl into their product, uh, particularly when it can be fatal? Uh, there, there are sort of two reasons for that. One, uh, they want to maximize profits, and, and they do so without any morals. And uh, so they will take the heroin that arrives in Anderson County, and, and this may happen along the way, too, and it may happen multiple times they will mix an inert substance with the heroin or the cocaine to stretch it. So if they get a kilo of cocaine, they might mix it with sucrose or baking soda or something like that, some inert substance so that it, one kilo turns into two kilos. And so they can, they can sell more and make more money. But when you stretch it like that, not surprisingly, it loses sub, some of its potency. And fentanyl is so cheap and easy to obtain that they can mix a little fentanyl in with the heroin and baking soda or the cocaine and sucrose um, that it, it boosts the perceived power of that drug up. And from a street standpoint, they maintain the reputation of selling good drugs. And in fact, the second part of your answer is addicts, are, uh, some addicts are attracted to more powerful or hot doses of drugs. And so word might spread that a certain dealer has particularly potent drugs. And despite the danger, the addicts will be attracted to that and contact those dealers to buy those drugs from them. Um, it has reached the point that at, because fentanyl uh, is, an, is an opioid, it is uh, reversible with the administration of Narcan. And, uh, and so addicts will take turns uh, injecting the drug whilst, while one of their buddies holds a, a nasal spray of Narcan. And if they get a fatally hot dose, may administer the Narcan to them. And then they will in round robin fashion, take turns and turns in terms of who will inject first and who will hold the Narcan. So Narcan's a wonderful drug. It saved a lot of lives, 
But unfortunately, uh, the unintended consequence of that is that it emboldens and empowers some addicts to take drugs they otherwise might be afraid of. So uh, I guess the bottom line answer to your question is, some dealers think it's good business and allows them to make more money to, in, to mix fentanyl in their drugs. And the second part would be it can make their drugs more desirable to some addicts. Thank you, um, <clears throat> District Attorney General Clark. Appreciate all you do. I don't see any other additional questions and we really appreciate what you do for Anderson County and for the state and uh, keep up the good work and, and anything from our commission, please let us know. Mayor, do you have anything you wanna add or any questions? No, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Dave, you for yeah. your time, I appreciate it. Thank you, we appreciate you. Okay, we'll move on now to committee reports. Uh, first committee report is purchasing report by Catherine Ashmary, Deputy Purchasing Agent. Catherine. Catherine, you there? Did we lose you? Oh, that was okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we got you. Go ahead. That was that was odd, but anyways, um, that always happens to me. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, contracts approved by the law director. We have one. Um, submitting for your approval. It's with Tennessee Orthopedic Clinics for the Board of Education. It's for a, um, certified athletic trainer services. Thank you, Catherine. I have a motion by Commissioner Fritz to approve as presented, sir. That's correct. Uh, Commissioner Yeager with a second. Yes, sir. And uh, this does cover both, I noticed, uh, Anderson County and Clinton. So uh, any questions on the motion uh, in front of us? Seeing none, let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes 16-0 and uh, just for the folks listening or tuning in, this is for professional services agreement, uh, as was mentioned to provide orthopedic services uh, to our high schools here in Anderson County, both of them. Uh, go ahead, Catherine. All right, next under contracts pending law director approval, um, we have two for Cannon for the county clerk for the Oak Ridge office. And these have now been approved by the law director submitting for your approval either individually or as a group. Is this a new motion here, Commissioner Fritz? Approval as a group. Okay, approval as a group. Is that a second there, Commissioner Yanger? Yes, sir. As a group. Any questions on the motion on the floor here? Seeing none, let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes 16-0, unanimous. Catherine, go ahead. That is all I have for the purchasing committee report. Thank you, Catherine, we appreciate your help and you have a good evening. Thank you, you too. All right, uh, next is the budget report. Mr. Robbie Holbrook, Interim Finance Director. Go ahead, Robbie. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First up, I have the cash and fund balance report. Just keep in mind, these are unaudited numbers. We won't have good numbers till next month, but um, general funds total fund balance at the end of June was eight, which we're still using June numbers because we're still closing June, $8,041. 41,791 cash was 10,101,594, which is almost equal to cash last year at this time. So does anybody have any questions on the fund balance report? I'll ask one real quick, Robbie. Uh, yeah. Is this, I mean, for me, it's kind of surprising that we're still about the same cash level. 
Uh, obviously, I know the internet sales tax and, and some other things are playing a factor, but uh, I was suspected a probably a little bit more of a dip. But as you mentioned, we're only about a hundred thousand and some change off from last year's numbers. Uh, That's correct, and I think because our sales tax and honestly our property tax collections were were um, really good before. COVID in the property tax collections, but sales tax after that, you know, we kept looking for those to go down, but they haven't yet. So um, they've still been trending up. And um, I would say the trust, the trustee's office did a really good job with, um, and I told Regina this, was bragging on her with uh, prior year collections. Those were up considerably from last year for every fund. So they've done a really good job um, collecting property taxes in the trustee's office. I appreciate your feedback. That's helpful for all of us. Uh, go ahead, continue, thank you. Okay, sure. Um, sales tax report, I reported on this last month because we got them that day, but June's uh, sales tax, we still haven't got July, which we'll receive in August. We're a month behind or two, but um, 3.4 million, which was up 9% from as a total for Anderson County. Anderson County was 390, 186, which was up 40% from last June. So as we keep talking about, sales tax keeps trending up. So we're looking good there. For the year in sales tax, I mean, this is why your cash is up. We finished at 1.4 million and we budgeted 820,000, which is $665,000 over budget. One, the schools finished at 10 million, 960, almost 11 million, and they budgeted 8.8 .8 million. So we have really good sales tax numbers this year. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say this, because I know uh, Commissioner Isabel always talks about it. He's done it ever since I've been on commission, and many others too, but uh, it always pays to buy an Anderson County shop in Anderson County. I know, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Meredith uh, in his program with the uh, Chamber of Commerce shop by local, it, all of that results into these numbers. So for those listening at home, thank you. Continue to buy in Anderson County every chance you get. Uh, if you can't buy in Anderson County something you can't find, go online and buy it because those tax dollars will come here as well. So thank you, Robbie. Go ahead and continue. Okay. Unless anybody has any questions for Robbie. Yes, sir. Commissioner Scott, go ahead. You might be muted there, Commissioner Scott. I just wanted to add I just wanted to add it when I was over on the agenda. I wanted to add that as a reminder, if you order something online, have it delivered to an address in Anderson County, um, and that's where the tax dollars are going to go. So in other words, if you're working in Knox County and you're having your stuff delivered to your office, the money's going to Knox County. It has to go to where it's delivered. So get your packages at home um, and help us gain even more. Thank you. Good comments. I don't see any other questions there. Robin, go ahead and continue. Okay, so now we're going to the um, summary of budget amendments. Group two appropriations from the school fund. There are two of them, three and four. Hey, uh, just quickly, I, didn't, I think, Commissioner Jamerson, did you have a question? Might be muted. Yes, I do. Yes, sir. You want it this time? Yeah, go ahead, sir, it's okay. Robbie, I saw in the paper that only five counties had a clean budget audit. And so it must be really difficult to have a clean budget audit. Uh, could you expound on that just a little bit? There's five counties that had a clean budget audit for this year or from the past year. We haven't got our audit this year. I, I mean, I'm fully expecting last year. To be, okay, last year we did have one audit finding. It was a small finding from the school department, but we almost were at a, a clean audit last year. But um, it is hard to have one. I mean, they can find something. Sometimes the auditors come in with a different focus each year and you don't know what that may be until they're here. So they clean that up and they next year they'll come in with another focus to work on in your county. So you just have to be prepared and hopefully you have um, 
we have focused on the right things that they're looking at. So to answer your question as much as best I can, I mean, we have some clean audits, but sometimes we do have a very small audit finding and last year's was really small. I was muted. Uh, Commissioner Jamison, you did not have a motion, did you, sir? You just want to speak and ask that question? I wanted the question to be discussed. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good question. Uh, there's nothing else before us on questions. Uh, Robbie, I have a Commissioner Yeager has a motion. Commissioner Yeager? Yes, it's approved as a group. I've got kind of lost now, but. Uh... <laughs> approve as a group, sir. You want to approve all the reports that uh, Robbie's given? Uh, the schools? Right. Is We're that looking at right? two appropriations, yes. number three yeah, and four. Number two. Okay. Are you under appropriations already, Robbie? Yes, sir. Okay. I apologize. Let me get out of here. I'm Sorry. Gonna... I'll slow down a little bit. No, no. I was still looking at those impressive graphs. So I apologize. Uh, <laughs> I like looking at that uh, positive stuff, especially the money. So you're saying I'm, I'm on the uh, summary of budget. Yes. Go ahead. Group, group what? Group two, two appropriations from the school department. Yes, sir. Okay. You, so, Commissioner Yeager, your, your motion is approved. Group two uh, uh, school appropriations. Commissioner Fritz, you're seconding. That's correct. Yes. Okay, any discussion on that motion for group two items? Uh, I believe it's three and four. Three and four. Yes, sir. 141. Any discussion on those items? Seeing none, let's go to the board. Motion passes 16 0, unanimous. Continue, Robbie, please. Okay. Group three are transfers from the school department. There are three, five, six, and seven. Seeking approval as a group or individually. Motion by Commissioner Fritz, sir. As a group. Yes, sir. Seconded by Commissioner Meade as a group. Thank you, sir. Um, any questions on that? That's group three, items five, six, and seven, fund 141. Special education, business offices, uh, any questions? Let's go to the board. Uh, Commissioner Meade, did your vote? Thank you, sir. Motion passes 16 yes, zero no's, unanimous. Go ahead, Robbie, continue, please. Okay, group four is appropriations, non-schools, the general fund appropriations and library EMS and tourism actually has one this time. It's There are nine budget amendments in group four, eight through 12, 14 and 25 through 27. I'd be happy to answer any questions. We have a motion by Commissioner Fritz to approve as a group. That's correct. Seconded by Commissioner Val as a group, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Thank, thank you, Commissioner Val. Uh, Commissioner Creasy has a question. Commissioner Creasy, go ahead, sir. Yes, uh, in group four, uh, the item, I guess it's number nine, general fund 101 for $132,500. Uh, the way I read that is going to the rescue squad is part of our fire truck payments to each of those groups, volunteer fire departments and the rescue squad. Uh, could you refresh my memory? I don't think we're buying the uh, rescue squad a fire truck, but we're giving them the 132,000 for another reason. Uh, could you explain that, what that reason or what that, uh, are we buying equipment with that 132,000? Exactly what are we doing? Mr. Creasy, Commissioner Creasy, that's actually the second portion of 132,500. So we're giving them $265,000, which each each of the, on the fire truck resolution, each of the volunteer fire departments in the rescue squad gets 
that portion. So they haven't, they're buying some kind of truck or I'm not sure exactly the mayor may, may be able to answer this question better. They haven't, before this money can be appropriated into the proper code, they haven't done anything in purchasing it. So I haven't exactly seen what they're getting. Actually, Robbie, it's Catherine, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, um, we did do a bid for a heavy duty rescue vehicle that will be almost that whole amount. I think there was like $5,000 that won't be spent on the vehicle that will be spent on equipment for the vehicle. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you um, for that comment. I just couldn't recall what how we were spending that large amount if we wasn't buying a fire truck. Thank you very much. Good questions, Commissioner Creasy. Any other questions on those items in front of us? The mayor's listed for 1.1 million. Uh, she got a rate, I think, is what I was told. I wanted to comment on those 25, 26, and 27 too. That's the direct appropriation grant from the governor, the 1.3 million, 1,370,764. This is Anderson County. We're doing our capital outlay with these three funds, um, starting out with those three. Still, we still, after this, we'll have 234,914 available to spend. So to your to your point, to to I was just kidding. Obviously, I was waiting for the mayor to say, Tracy, what are you talking about? But uh, so uh, that is the 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 grant money, I guess, from the state. Yes, and the mayor obviously will receive these funds. And you've already and the mayor and the department heads have the, the, these funds earmarked for certain projects. Is 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 that That's correct? correct? We we've actually already received them. Or we we got we actually received them last. Uh, the week of budget committee meeting, August the uh, third or fourth that day. So um, we got them in the budget committee because some of these bids take a long time to execute. And I know we're still waiting on some of the things that we bought last year, early in August. And um, except it was actually September before we did capital outlay last year, but um, we're still, we still haven't completed some of those orders. Well, let me ask you a question, Rob, Robbie, real quickly. Uh, the 1.135 million that you're speaking of that received from the state, those funds, are they showing up in our undesignated fund balance as revenue or is that- No, sir, they are not because they were a um, revenue we received in August and it's the um, fiscal year 2021 money. So it's not showing up in your fund balance at all. Thank you, I appreciate you uh, explaining that. Commissioner Yeager, sir, you have a question. I do. Um, since we have a couple sheriff's department people here with us, uh, the equipment and vehicles, what are we getting for that 500 uh, some thousand? You're getting, I can answer that if you want me to. Okay, sure. I was just trying Sorry. to put them on the spot as well. Well, you, if any of them would like to answer, they can, but I have this on page 25. It's right after budget amendment 25. It's not your page 25, but in the budget amendments, they're buying 32, 33 in-car video cameras for 125,895, 27 in-car video camera, two base kits at 79,110, 10 full right gear uniforms and equipment, 9,295, 33 active shooter rifle plane, plate kits, 14,850 and eight vehicles, including the equipment. Three hundred and twenty thousand eight fifty. Thank you very much. You're Thank welcome. you. Good question, Commissioner Yeager. Commissioner Scott. Thank you. The breakdown for that, um, Commissioner Yeager, is on page one hundred and five. Thanks, Commissioner Scott. She's on top of it. Uh, any other questions before we go to vote? So yes, all these funds are uh, earmarked and being set aside for worthy causes, obviously, and. Uh, EMS, tourism, everyone, election office, finance, mayor's office. Uh, so this is good. Any other questions? Let's go to the board and vote. Thank you, Robbie, for answering the questions. No problem. Sixteen zero. motion passes unanimously. Go ahead, Robbie. Okay, good five transfers. There's, there's only one. It's for $5,000 EMA. They're transferring from a 599 at Orcas, which is grant money. A motion from Commissioner Fritz to approve the grant money for $5,000 for EMAs. Is that correct, Commissioner Fritz? That's correct. Thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Mead. 
I see a thumbs up. Thank you. Any discussions on group five, which is only item 13 uh, EMA for $5,000 grant money? Seeing none, let's go to the board. Motion passes 16-0 unanimous. Okay, Robbie. Okay. Sure. In group six appropriations, there's 11 budget amendments and we might want to take, we might want to break these up a little bit. 15, 16, 17 failed in budget meeting, 18 through 22, 23 failed and 24 through 28, um, 24 and 28. And I can break these down however you would like, or we can, you can. Why don't, why don't you tell us the ones that were approved and need approval from our body uh, then we'll come back to the ones that need more discussion if you want. Does that sound okay? okay? Sure. 15 and 16 were approved, 18 through 22, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22, and then 24 A and B and 28 in group six. Okay. We have so one, on your, uh, I didn't put any money in where they did, they weren't approved. I see what you're saying. Good, good job. Okay. So uh, we have a motion, Commissioner Fritz. Move uh, to approve the ones that were approved by budget committee. Thank you, sir. Uh, seconded by Commissioner Jameson. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jameson. I have a question by Commissioner Creasy. Go ahead, Commissioner Creasy. You may be muted again. It's okay. Yeah, I'm getting too anxious, I guess. Uh, Item 15, uh, the $4,200 uh, submitted by the mayor. Yeah, I'd like some information on that. I believe that's part of that will be for uh, the funds. Is that funds for the ADA fishing pier? Um, okay. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Creasy, that particular item last year, we approved that in as part of the budget process with some excess funds that came in to the county. And because we um, were not able to get that planning process done by June 30th, we reserved that money and now we're pulling it back out. So yes, it is for planning for Lost Bottom Park, uh, which is uh, in the Claxton area. And one of the things we are looking at are improvements. We're working with Conservation Board and um, Chairman Fritz and, uh, and Chairman Wandell, um, as that's in their community. We are looking at what we can do with TVA's approval to improve that area. And yes, the ADA fishing pier was one of those on there. I don't know if it will get ADA approval, but we are trying to make ADA improvements at that park. That is certainly welcome. I know we have it at a couple of other parks. Uh, Gibbs Ferry is is well used, and I've seen wheelchair users there. Um, and I think the one over by the uh, in the city of Oak Ridge, uh, near the Solway Bridge, is also uh, accessible. That uh, I'm very pleased uh, with that. And I just wanted to make that comment. I think Louise may still be with us and I know she'll be pleased also. Thank you, Commissioner Creasy. And while I'm on uh, the mic, uh, Chairman, uh, I also have some questions uh, on some of the other items that failed. And uh, I'll, if we're gonna hold those out, I'll reserve my comments until then. Thank you, Commissioner Creasy. We'll certainly come back to those. Good questions, appreciate your comments. Thank you, Mayor. Anything else, uh, any questions on these items in, in front of us? Like it's again, 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 24A, 24B, and 28. Yes, and Chairman, I wanna let everybody know that 24 is the, um, money we made off 205 Main, we're paying it, we're moving into the 151 debt service fund to pay on the um, the bond. That was what budget committee voted to do. Very good. 
Very good. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Let's go to the board and vote on this, this group as presented. Brian. Jameson is maybe wanting to talk. Oh, Commissioner Jameson, I apologize. Do you, do you have a motion to amend, sir? I see. Oh, he doesn't need to talk. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thanks for catching that. Okay, let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes 16-0, unanimous. Okay, bro. Uh, Mr. Holbrook, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Um, the other two, 17 and 23, I mean, they failed in budget committee. I don't have to bring them back up to vote on unless you, the, if someone wants to in the, on the commission. What's the pleasure of the commission and board? I'd like to move on since they've been voted down. Okay. Correct. To move Mr. on. Got a, we, we, let me address Chris, Commissioner Fritz here as a question. Commissioner Fritz. You may be muted, Commissioner Fritz. That's what I was getting ready to bring up. You know, uh, when we had our rules committee meeting, uh, we had over eight commissioners in our meeting. It was brought up uh, something failed in committee. The, uh, the concern of uh, people to keep bringing things up in commission uh, that uh, give, we need to give our uh, committees credibility and, uh, and to quit bringing things up in commission once it fails in committee. And I like to uh, ask our commissioners to uh, uh, give our uh, committees the, the work that they do. And if it fails in committee, let it uh, go back to committee and, uh, and uh, try to make it stand in committee and uh, uh, let committees do their work. Thank you, Commissioner Fritz, good comments. Uh, Commissioner Waddell, you have a motion, sir, go ahead. I don't know if you need it or not, but my motion was to move on and uh, uh, exactly what Commissioner Fritz said. And I was I gonna you. second that motion. Okay, we have a, a motion to move on and uh, not take any actions on items 17 and 23, uh, seconded by Commissioner Scott. I have a question by Commissioner Creasy. Go ahead, sir. You may be muted. Yeah, sorry about that. The item 23, I noticed that uh, it was a unanimous decision by the HR committee to approve uh, the motion of level 12 salaries being equitable. Uh, and then on, and I was, that's kind of in contradiction to Fritz's statement, uh, somewhat, 50%, I guess, there. Uh, the other question I had was on 24, I guess it's B on the 205 Main Street, if we apply that uh, money to the 205 main debt, what will the remaining remaining debt be if we was to apply that 300,000 to the debt service for that main street? Good questions, Commissioner Priest. I'm gonna let Robbie come back to that question when we finish this motion on these two items, 17 and 23, but I do appreciate your comments on those items, specifically 23. Uh, if this motion should fail or pass, uh, if it does fail, I would imagine that this item can continue to be discussed in, in, in a committee, whether it's finance, budget, and maybe it goes operations, I don't know, uh, but it's a pleasure of the board right now, and the board has got a motion on the floor to, uh, move forward without taking any action on those two items. We have a second. Any other discussions on that particular two items, items 17 and 23 under group six appropriations? Seeing none, let's go to the board and Commissioner Creese, I'll come back to that 205 main question.
Commissioner Jamison. Right, thank you, sir. Motion passes 14 yes, one no, one abstain, Commissioner McCamey. Uh, okay, uh, Commissioner uh, Robbie, could you answer, uh, Commissioner? Yes, I can. I uh, um, looked that up before we came on and. Um, for the senior center portion, they'll uh, after, if we after we apply the three hundred thousand, a little over two hundred and twenty-four thousand five twenty-five to approximately still on two hundred five main for their portion of that loan. You know, it was a combination loan for one point four million for the DARC and the senior center building. Does that answer Thanks. your question, Commissioner Creason? Yeah, that, that answers my question. Doesn't look like uh, anyone else had as much interest in that as I did. Thank you. Good question. Thank you. Thank you, Robbie. Anything else, Robbie? Yes, I mean, in group seven, miscellaneous, um, just really quickly. Um, the compensation plan guidelines. Actually, I think we have to, that was a motion that passed in the budget committee, and I'm gonna I'm gonna need to get my. That's the bad thing about working from home. You got to find your min minutes when you got limited space here. I found them. So, Section A, Director of Human Resources and Risk Management, Kim Jeffers Whitaker, presented the most recent updates on the compensation compensation plan guidelines. Motion by Commissioner Shane Val and seconded by Commissioner Denver Waddell and pass to refer to the Anderson County Board of County Commissioners with a recommendation for full approval. And I think Kim's on here if, um, we need to ask her any questions, but group A does need approval by a county commission. Do we have a motion on group A, <clears throat> no, excuse me, group seven out of A, uh, compensation plan guidelines. We have a motion, Commissioner Mead. You yes. Be, go ahead, thank you. To, to approve uh, the compensation plan as presented, the guidelines? Yes. Thank you. And seconded by Commissioner Denenberg. That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, appreciate it, Commissioner Denenberg. Any questions on this? Uh, Commissioner Scott, and I will come back to you, uh, Kim, to let you speak. Go ahead, Commissioner Scott. I wanted to ask Kim, um, from what date does that plan begin? Good question. Kim, go ahead and take the floor. Thank you. Y'all hear me? Okay, so the effective date will be um, the date that is approved by the legislative body. So if it gets approved tonight, that will be the event effective date of the guidelines. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Kim. Did you have anything else, Kim, you'd like to add? I mean, feel no, free. I was just here. I was just here for questions if anyone had any. Okay. Any other discussion, any other questions on this one? item uh, compensation plan guidelines. Seeing none, let's go to the board. Commissioner Meredith, Commissioner Mead. Thank you, Commissioner Meredith. Thank you, Commissioner Mead. Motion passes 15 yes, one no. Thank you, Kim, for the work your group did on that. I know it's a lot and we appreciate it. Thank you and thank you to Jay because he worked a lot on this as well. Oh, don't give Jay too much credit. He's been quiet tonight. Yes, he has, but he's worked a lot. We haven't got to him yet. No, nah, he's Jay. <laughs> appreciate that, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, good to have these kind of guidelines for everyone that works hard in our county and having these uh, help you and every all the department heads. Okay, anything else there, Robbie? Yes, group seven miscellaneous um, section B. The mayor just presented some information. I don't know if you all are aware, but um, not only did the state give us the great the direct appropriation grant, which we talked about earlier, but we, the most recent allocation of funds for the coronavirus relief fund of 1.1, 
million, one million one hundred forty-seven thousand two thirty that we have as a possibility to spend also in additional funds for the county. So we're working on those that grant as well, and um, hopefully we can find lots of ways to spend that money. Thank you, Robbie. Any questions for Robbie on that item? <clears throat> Commissioner Denenberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mayor and or Robbie, what type of guidelines will be coming with that money as far as how it can be spent? Um, Commissioner Denenberg, they, um, they have listed right now some FAQs that that try to outline, we're basically going to have to feel our way through this. I mean, there is guidance. Uh, Randy Walters and I both uh, sat in on a webinar. It was a mandatory training and um, they have consultants that have been hired by the state of Tennessee that go through what you can use it on. So the main thing we came away, Randy and I came away understanding is that these are things, these are costs that you had not budgeted for. So for instance, um, obviously some of the increase in supplies for cleaning the facility, um, some of the plexiglass that we've installed, some of those things we can use these funds on, we can get reimbursement for. But then there are other things. So for instance, I specifically asked about the increase in our waste management in our hall fees. So as you all know, we've been struggling with this and so have other counties. Uh, we greatly exceeded our budget in hall fees because of the amount of trash. You know, people being at home with COVID, they overran the convenience centers. And I asked, could we be reimbursed for those additional hall fees and they said yes you can if you've exceeded your budget and it was an impact of covid yes you can turn around and seek reimbursement on that so a lot of this there is guidance but you know we've got to be cautious and and um you know randy and robbie and i've been talking about it um if we can show, so for instance, uh, tonight as part of your budget agenda, um, you approve some ad additional IT staffing that wasn't in our uh, original budget passed by county mm -hmm. committee here. And under the guidance we've been given, we believe that that will be a reimbursable expense per the training session we were we were on. So there are other things. So for instance, I know Brian and IT are looking at doing some uh, some additional upgrades to address some of the challenges, uh, you know, with work from home and, and these virtual meetings. Um, now is a time that we might want to spend some of those funds to get that work done um, in light of COVID, so. Thank you very much. I appreciate the information. Good question and great feedback, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Anderson. Chairman, um, what the mayor was saying about the, the reimbursements for the hall fees got me to thinking. I, I know Commissioner Waddell and I both received some calls about the convenience center recently about it closing early on Saturdays and stuff probably related to people being home, like she said. And, and I just wondered if maybe um, maybe we could run it run it by the consultants as far as adding another uh, pan or a, a third dumpster up there if, if that expense could potentially be covered under that if it's directly tied to the pandemic thanks excellent idea i will look into that chair uh, mr anderson good questions and thank you for bringing it up <clears throat> commissioner anderson and uh, mayor any other discussions on uh, the COVID-19 funding. Okay, we'll move on. Robbie, go okay. ahead. Sure, and, and, and last in group seven, C and D, we've, we've discussed these earlier and they were both budget amendments that were approved in um, group six and group four and group six. So um, we've actually already taken care of everything tonight and that was in my um, 
from my agenda unless somebody else has any more questions for me. Any more questions for Robbie? Commissioner Denenberg has a question. Go ahead, Commissioner Denenberg. Robbie, uh, during the budget meeting, I had asked for a report on what their, excuse me, what the costs were for closing the courthouse on election day. If you don't have it now, of course, I guess the next budget meeting will be fine, but I just wanted to give you as, uh, just a gentle nudge. I got you. I'm work, I have actually asked a couple of questions. I don't have that ready. I was preparing that for next budget meeting. So um, I promise to have some okay. stuff for you by the end. Thank you. That's. Thank you, Commissioner Denenberg. And thank you for the report. Well done there, uh, Robbie. You have a good evening and uh, we'll move on down the road here. All right, y'all do the same. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. All right, next item, uh, Commissioner Creasy, ADAs. Floor is yours, sir. Oh, thank you. I'll click the mic this time. Uh, yeah, back in June, uh, when it was rumored that the governor was not going to extend the virtual meetings for July, uh, we were, Louise wrote a letter to the governor asking him to extend it. So I'm very optimistic. She's wrote another letter this time that asking him to extend the virtual meetings past August. And I'm hoping it has the same effect on the governor that the last one did. Uh, but I think it, if we as a county commission and a county government was to also write a letter to the governor uh, representing this body, and especially if we voted unanimously to support such a letter to the governor, I think that would have a strong influence with him. Uh, but I would like to see us as a county commission uh, support a letter to the governor asking him to uh, continue the virtual meetings for county commission, city councils, and local governments. Um, and I'd like to make that a motion uh, that this committee or this commission write a letter to the governor asking him not to let the his order extending uh, virtual meetings expire, ask him not to have it, let it expire. Okay, Commissioner Creasy, if you don't mind, go ahead and hit your motion button there. I'm gonna go to Commissioner Fritz and uh, get his comments. Commissioner Fritz, go ahead. I was just gonna follow up with what uh, Commissioner uh, Creasy was talking about. You know, uh, a lot of people don't think this is a very something very serious until it hits home. Uh, we just had a very close friend of the family to uh, pass away this uh, week in Oak Ridge Hospital with COVID. And uh, so uh, this is something that is alive and well, and is, so which means Anderson County just experienced a death this week. Uh, so uh, uh, this is something that's still uh, alive and well, and still is on upswing. And uh, uh, we just need to ask everyone to uh, take all the precautions that are necessary and uh, to be uh, be safe and think of others as we uh, you do your daily business. Thank you, Fred. <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner Fritz. Uh, Commissioner Waddell, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I agree with, with what everybody's saying. The only issue I have is our kids are back in school um, our essential workers, they've been at work during the whole, uh, the whole thing, uh, everybody at the sheriff's department, everybody at the courthouse. I'm just not going to be able to support a letter uh, asking that. I, I think that if uh, the school kid, everybody's back in school, the teachers are back, our kids are back, our workers are all working, we need to be, we need to be doing the same. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Waddell, for your comments. Any other discussion? We have a motion by Commissioner Creasy to draft a letter on behalf of Anderson County government to the governor uh, requesting that the uh, seconded by Commissioner Scott. Any other yes, discussion? Oh, there is a discussion. Oh, 
I didn't see. Okay, I thought I heard somebody say they had something they want to say. Um, so you need no other discussion. Let's go to the board to vote. Uh, yes would be to write a letter to the governor and no would be to not write a letter. Motion passes 13 yes, three no's. And uh, I appreciate the discussion and um, I, I think it's, uh, it's tough on all of us and uh, Commissioner Waddell and EMS and all of the teachers who are out in front of this thing. Uh, it's a tough thing. So uh, it's, uh, you know, I, my hope is that if we are able to meet virtual, because we have some commissioners that have some health issues and concerns. And I think I'm hopeful that the governor will be respectful of those and uh, and again, we've got all the precautions there in the, in the room that you're sitting in now that um, the mayor and uh, buildings and grounds have done, uh, which have been very impressive. I haven't been there yet, but I can see them online. So uh, we'll just keep being safe as we can as a county and do our thing. Um, okay, what's next here? Uh, well, Jerry, I, did, you, did you have anything I else? I just want to follow up and thank everyone, those that voted for and those that voted against. I respect their votes as much as the ones that voted for it. And I just wanted to thank everyone. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, great comments, Commissioner Creasy, and I agree with you 100% uh, in terms of thanking everyone and even the ones that didn't vote for it. We're uh, united front regardless. Okay, um, that ends that report. Next, we're going to the departments on the Thrive Health and Wellness Center annual report, and that will be given by our HR Director, Kim Whitaker. Kim, you're back on the floor again. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Brian to uh, say, share my screen. While he's sharing that screen, I wonder if the folks at home will be able to see it, I imagine, probably. See it at home? Good. Yes, Good. I can see it. Great. Okay. So I will get started. Um, the initial annual summary report that was given for the Thrive Health and Wellness Center was shared in June with um, the Employee Insurance Board of Trustees by Care Here's co-founder and COO Ben Baker. A summary was then presented to the HR Advisory Committee in July, and that can be found in your consent agenda for this evening. But tonight I am very excited to present a high-level summary for March 2019 through February 2020 for our center. I'll also be sharing a look back on our ROI since inception. On this trend savings report, the on, move some of these, sorry, I can't see my screen. There we go. The on-site medical clinic opened in March of 2015. At that time, at that time, the national projected increase of claim cost was 8%. Applying that trajectory increase computes to $9,222 per employee per year in 2019, meaning in 2015, the medical cost per employee per year was $8,539 without the implementation of the on-site clinic and based upon the 8% average increase, the per employee per year cost for 2019 was estimated to be at $9,222. Based upon Anderson County government's current medical plan in, in 2015 and the initial goals were set for the on-site health clinic. First and foremost, it was to ensure the employees receive efficient and effective office visits, identify chronic concerns early, and engage members in wellness and lifestyle changes. All the while, the goal was to save $1.9 million by March 2021. The time frame that we are looking at 
there was 138 members were found to suffer from chronic conditions. The chronic conditions are listed in this area right here. The estimated potential savings tied to those specific instances is almost $858,000. Briefly, I wanna draw your attention to the markers, five down, second up from the bottom. It is the um, instances for markers for prostate cancer were found in this year. I do not believe we can put a monetary value on catching these two or just any of the concerns for that matter. These type of discoveries affect the member and their families today and tomorrow, as well as our insurance fund. There was also 208 patient wellness programs that were put in place. Some of those were composed for the uh, unique health risks risk that were found, but others were just generalized uh, care plans, including our tobacco cessation program. The next graph is a look back since inception to see if the on-site clinic is possibly impacting our ER visits. So in 2015, prior to the on-site clinic, we had 129 members that visited the ER and it cost the fund over $392,000. In 2019, we had 82 members visit the ER at $94,952. That is a 76 decrease in cost. I do believe that some of the savings here is due to the county's partnership with the Kroger's The Little Clinic via care here. Also, starting July 1 of this year, uh, the Board of Trustees approved a telehealth program. This program is through MD Live via care here, and it's a benefit that is available 24 7 and is free to Anderson County government regularly active part-time and full-time employees and their dependents who are on Anderson County government's health coverage. Notice this is for general health as well as behavioral health. With these two programs in place, we hope to see a continual decrease not only in the ER cost, but cost across the board for a plan. This slide shows specific savings due to member usage of the Thrive Health and Wellness Center instead of going out to the marketplace for their healthcare needs. On average, in Anderson County, office visits cost the fund around $138. On average, the on-site clinic office visit costs the fund around $73, which is an estimated 47% savings right out the door. Office visits and productivity savings for the plan you're being reviewed is over 400,000. That's if you consider the office visits, labs, medication and productivity. If you want to look at the hard savings only and remove the productivity, it's at $248,000. Patient savings, this is money in the employee's pocket. For the year being reviewed, it was $94,800 a savings that the employees received because they elected to use the on-site clinic. Now for the five-year projection. These numbers are a reflective look back since the implementation of the Thrive Health and Wellness Center. First, let's look at the initial projection versus the actual claim cost. If you remember, in 2015, the assumed claim trend was 8%. That was based on the national average increase being seen in healthcare claims. The initial goal was to bend that trajectory by decreasing the average. Yet what we witnessed is rare in claims submission. Our 2019 actual claims trend seen a decreasing effect of an unheard of negative 1.4%. Even rarer was our per employee per year cost. Prior to the implementation of the on-site health clinic in 2015, our poor per employee per year was at $8,539. In 2019, we're at $8,061. And if you remember, our trajectory projections based on the average of the 8% was at 9,222. 
That is an annual savings of over $380,000. Our initial goal was to save 1.9 million by March of 2021 with the implementation of the Thrive Health and Loan Center, but we have already surpassed that. Total savings since the inception is over 2.8 million with an ROI of $2.90 for every dollar spent. Though I feel the usage speaks to whether the employees like Thrive Health and Wellness Center, I still wanted to share their input. 98% of the employees state that they would recommend using the on-site health clinic. The NPS score or the Net Promoter Score, which is a patient loyalty and satisfaction index, is at 95. And in the business world, anything above a 75 is a world-class business rate. Over here on the right is various um, comments that the employees made during our surveys. And one I want to draw your attention to is at the bottom, where they say it is the best thing the county has ever done for the employees. Does anyone have any further any questions or anything they want to ask? Any questions? Are you done with your report so we can? Okay, good. Uh, great presentation. Uh, Brian, if you can get the screen back up so I can see if there's any uh, questions by the other commissioners or anyone involved here. Uh, just go ahead and unmute. Uh, Commissioner Scott, go ahead. Of course, I have something to say. When this was first brought out, I'll remind everyone, I, I, I threw a thumbs down. I was very skeptical. I had a lot of questions. Um, I found it hard to believe that we were going to save any money for the county employees, let alone for the county. And I, I, every year that the reports come out, I have to take the time to applaud the project and, and say well done all around to the HR department and those that are working with the Thrive Clinic, uh, because it's obvious that the employees of the county are very pleased to have this um, service at their at their you know their beck and call, and it's saving us a great deal of money. Thank you very much. Great comments. Thank you, Commissioner Scott. Commissioner Me. Yeah, I just want to comment that I'm really proud of how this has gone, and the general statement is this was taken care of on a local basis using companies and free enterprise, and it and we just showed how well things can really work. And I guarantee you, the state or federal government couldn't do this good a job. Thanks. Great comments. Commissioner McKamey, go ahead, sir. And Mr. Chairman, I'm not one to say I told you so, but uh, I did bring this up and uh, ask that this be considered uh, in one of our operations committee meetings. And uh, I'm, I'm proud that we got it passed and we have it for the employees. And like I said, I'm not one to say I told you so, but I knew it would work. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McKamey. And it's okay to say uh, you told us so. I think I was probably one of those commissioners at the time that wasn't understanding it and didn't think it would uh, benefit us as it has. And I certainly use it. My family uses it. Uh, they do a great job, and I know all the employees use it. And uh, uh, yes, it's been awesome and uh, very thankful that our employees have access to this type of uh, service in our county, especially in our county courthouse. It's amazing. Anybody, anybody else got any comments? I would like to add one thing, uh, Chairman Wandell. Yes, Mayor. Yes, Mayor, please. Um, CARE HERE DURING THE COVID EVENT um, DID AN EXCELLENT JOB OF ACTUALLY STANDING UP TELEHEALTH. AND THIS IS SOMETHING THAT THE BOARD OF TRUSTEES had, HAD TALKED ABOUT DOING AND WANTED TO DO. AND WHEN THEY DID THAT SO QUICKLY FOR US DURING COVID, uh, SO THAT EMPLOYEES DID NOT HAVE TO COME TO THE COURTHOUSE, uh, WE ENDED UP EXPANDING THAT. AND SO, um, I know Kim sends out uh, a lot of emails, but I do want to draw special attention to something new that CARE HERE is doing through them. We, we entered into an expanded contract with them that allows 
part-time employees to participate as well. So it is a first-time benefit for them with care here. And then we also put in place mental health and uh, that is uh, a, a very serious issue um, in society, also here with our employee base. And we have a, a lot of PTSD with, um, you know, certain departments like EMS or sheriff's department. And this is a way uh, it's not handled in our clinic. It's actually off-site, um, I believe it's uh, handled out of Brentwood, isn't it, Kim, those particular physician pools. So there's an added layer of confidentiality for those mental health issues. And, and that has been a great expansion using the success of care here and building upon uh, what they see are needs of the employees. So those are things that I, I think you all as county commissioners can be proud of that you've allowed to, to uh, step you know, go an extra step now, and we're going to try this out and see how that works for mental health, and then also adding a, a, an additional benefit for part time workers. Thank you for speaking up, Mayor, and thank you for sharing all that. That's tremendous. That's that's great. Anyone else? Kim, thank you. Do you have anything you want to say before we move on? I just want to thank you all again for allowing me to present such a positive message this evening. I know that's not always the case, but I'm very grateful for the clinic. I'm grateful for the employees. I know speaking to a lot of the employees, this makes a, a big difference in their lives. So I really just want to say thank you to all of you, um, the board of trustees and to the HR advisory committee, because I know they all had a hand in getting this in place and it took us a couple of tries to get here, but um, very grateful. We are among CareCare's uh, top five clinics in, in the U.S. Oh, wow. um, with our employee ratings among top three. So nice. if you haven't met our providers, you should. They are wonderful people, wonderful folks. They treat our employees like they are family. And yes. um, I think that's a lot of what, what does get the ratings as high as they are. So just want to say thank you from, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate you and all you do. And those comments uh, are well-founded, absolutely. Commissioner Creasy has a comment real quick. Go ahead, Commissioner Creasy. Yeah, real quick, if, if I may, I just want to thank Robert McCamey for bringing that up and, and all of our employees and our appointed and elected officials that we got one heck of a good county government and and we're working as a good team and and it's really showing uh, I appreciate the comments the mayor made and i i think her comments sort of seals that it, it we do have a good county government working together as a team and we're accomplishing a lot thank you kim thank you mayor thank you chairman Amen, brother. I appreciate those comments. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. Anybody else before we move on here? Thanks again, Kim. You have a good evening. Appreciate you hanging with us and giving that report. And we welcome them reports anytime. So anytime you want to, you just let us know. Okay. What we got next here? Um, Director of Schools, Dr. Parrott, are you there, sir? Not sure if he's there or he's maybe he's muted. Here. Sorry, go ahead, Dr. Perry. I I just uh I hope you all got a chance to read my report and just a few things. You know, we're in our second week of school. Our attendance is holding good. Uh we have had some cases of uh people that have got uh, tested positive for COVID outside of our uh, organization, but we have a great plan to uh, make sure our students and staff are always safe. And uh, just again, I want to say they're doing an amazing job and uh, couldn't be more proud. We're going to have a, I've told them all, we're going to have a different school year, but it's going to be a successful school year. So with that, I will answer any questions. Any questions for Dr. Perry? Dr. Perry, I just, while others might be reaching for their button, I just want to say thank you. Uh, it's been impressive to pull into the schools and see the teachers. Uh, obviously, they're wearing three to four different types of hat. And I know all the staff and your administration, everyone's 
done a lot of different things and uh, I understand there's going to be positive cases, uh, but uh, I, I'm very impressed with what I've seen and I just want to thank you for your leadership and I want to thank all of those involved, the teachers, the janitors, everybody involved. Uh, it's been impressive and I feel very comfortable taking my child to school and dropping uh, her off. And uh, I appreciate the, the, the leadership you put into this to make it work as best as possible. You never did make any guarantees, none of us can, but I, I think you uh, got us pretty pretty close to the best as we can do. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. So uh, Commissioner Isabel, you, and then I'll come to you, Commissioner Fritz, and then Anderson be next. Go ahead, Commissioner Isabel. Mr. Chairman, but I, actually, I just want to echo your sentiments and, and tell uh, Dr. Parrott that I really appreciate uh, his leadership during this time of fear for students, parents, and teachers, and I think you're doing an excellent job. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Isabel. I agree 100%. Commissioner Fritz. Uh, Dr. Parrott, uh, it might be a little bit too early to uh, tell right now, but uh, I know you get to count the, both the uh, people who are actually attending in, per, uh, in person and then also uh, the ones who are doing the virtual schools. But uh, how do the numbers look right now uh, compared to, you know, uh, for this year? Uh, the, are they are looking pretty strong or, or do you see a pretty good drop or how, how things are looking? Right now, our, our total today was uh, 6,079 students. And that is about 1,225 students that are online. So we finished the year at about 6,100. So we're down about 30 students from last year. Uh, we still got some more that are, we're getting new students every day. So I think we're gonna be, uh, hold our own, you know, every year for the last 10 years, we've dropped about 100 students accordingly. So I don't think we'll drop that much this year. I think we'll hold at about 6,100. Thank you, Dr. Perry. Thank you, Commissioner Fritz. Commissioner, did you have anything else, Commissioner Fritz? Uh, no, I just uh, interested how we were looking number wise, and you know, because you know a lot of the, his funding comes with numbers and. Right. That's right. All right. Thank you. Good questions, so, Commissioner Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, Dr. Parrott, and thank you for everything you've done, getting the school year to transition smoothly. But um, would you care to? talk about what we talked about before the meeting with the, the football games. I've had several parents and people have been interested in how that's going to look this year. Uh, yes, we are having a small football game this Friday night with uh, Clinton and Anderson County, and we'll be sending out the protocol for uh, everything that'll kind of uh, do more detail, but a couple of things. One thing is that there will be no tickets sold at the gate there will be either sold online, uh, you can go to Ticket Spicket, or you can buy them at Clinton High School. Uh, we will require every person to have their temperature checked. If it's over 100.4, we will not let them in just like school. They will be required to wear a mask. Uh, the football field will look a little different. The band is gonna be on in the end zones. Uh, our student, uh, the student, the student, I guess you'd say the student body, they're going to be uh, somewhere on the track, but we're also going to let people bring chairs in so they can sit around the track so they can socially distance. Uh, they're going to be about 2,000 tickets, and I think our stadium social distancing at Anderson County will hold about 1,400. Uh, we're going to have uh, so many people around just to try to help. And we asked everybody to be patient when they come in. But I think that's the biggest thing is that we will, we will not be selling tickets at the gate. They have to already have their tickets. And then concessions are prepackaged. The concession stand will be prepackaged. Uh, it will have very limited, uh, you know, candy bars. I think they're going to get Chick-fil-A and things like that. So Cokes, and we're going to try to get them in and out. And I, everybody will have a, uh, all the people will have to have a mask on. One thing will change too is TWSAA will not let the students at the end shake hands. So I hope everybody doesn't think that it's just Clinton and Harrison County didn't like each other and didn't want to shake hands. It was something TWSAA said we needed to do. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, if I can too, I'd like to just thank uh, Commissioner Isabel for all the stuff that he did to help us get all of our uh, shields in place. Uh, he kind of got us uh, on that right track. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Dr. Perry. As far as the non-shaking of the hands, uh, one solution could be they line up about 10 yards apart, uh, coaches included, and uh, bow to each other at the end or something. I know that'd be a lot to ask of these two teams, but I think it, it's, it's another option that could be used instead of shaking hands. And that uh, Battle of the Bridge trophy, I'd still like to see it, not that it matters what I think, but I'd like to see it be the sportsman's trophy instead of the Battle of the Bridge. It could still be the Battle of the Bridge, but maybe it can be reference sportsmanship and whoever wins it's the best sportsmanship. But uh, that's just a couple of comments. Uh, Commissioner Denenberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, before I get to the reason I originally asked to speak, uh, rather than bowing, how about them just doing an air high five? <laughs> I can't see football that'll, players. That'll, that'll, work, that'll work. Well, you know, some of our folks might turn the other way and bow. You never know. So uh, yeah, you never maybe, maybe the air high five would work. You're right. <laughs> Dr. Parrott, um, what has Anderson County done as far as providing PPE to the schools? Uh, we have worked with the state to make sure that we've got the PPE that they brought in. We also had all of our uh, all of our schools have all the hand sanitizer. They all have our masks. We have bought masks. We've bought uh, disinfectant. We have the shields for all of our teachers. And you know, Ms. Denenberg, you and a uh, doctor, and I'll forget her name right now, Bunick has really helped to make sure we've got our PPPs in all of our nursing stations. And uh, right now we are waiting on another shipment from the state, but I think uh, right now we're, we're very, very well covered. Uh, you know, one of the things we did this year is put a nurse in every school and that's really helped to make sure that well, everybody is covered medical wise. So I wanna thank all the people that have supported us and that have made masks and brought in hand sanitizer to help, but you know, our schools are in pretty good shape right now. Well, good. I wasn't asking for any mention, but I did want to make sure that you understood that all of those 20 tubs that Dr. Bunick put together um, was done by the coordination of the Oak Ridge Rotary Clubs and a grant that they received from the National Rotary Club to provide um, items like you were given. And um, they worked hours upon hours upon hours in sewing the gowns, the masks, uh, cutting out the uh, face shields of various and different uh, designs. And um, I just wanted to be sure that that they were recognized and thanked for all of the time and effort that they put into it. Uh, we've got Ryan, our director of communications, working on a story, uh, I think with uh, one of the channels in Knoxville and with also our Clinton Courier paper for that. But yes, I want to thank the Rotary Club of Oak Ridge for really and truly that was uh, very well uh, received and I want to thank them. They also uh, did it for Clinton City. Yes, they did. That was all of Anderson County. They took care of the city of Oak Ridge schools, including St. Mary's. And as soon as that was completed, they jumped right in for all of the Anderson County schools from elementary to the high school. Sure did. Thank you, Dr. Parrott. Thank you, Commissioner Denenberg, and thank you to the Rotary Club of Oak Ridge for all that. That's tremendous, and I appreciate you bringing it up. Thank you, Dr. Parrott, for following up with some uh, some media type attention to it. That's great. Uh, Commissioner McCamey. Yeah, going back to the football game, uh, it will be uh, aired live on Channel 95 if you have Comcast cable. Uh, if you have AT&T U-verse, it'll be live on Channel 99. Uh, so a lot of people who, who do not want to get out or can't get out, or if you can't get a ticket, you can always watch it on uh, Anderson County TV. 
Thank you, Commissioner McCain. And I think you can even watch it on uh, Channel 95 Facebook, maybe, is that or Anderson County School? No, I'm not sure about that. I think you can, just if, if they don't get the channels. I think you can go to Facebook and watch it. I, I think, I'm not sure. Uh, Commissioner Creasy. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Dr. Parrott, I just want to show my applaud to you and your staff for the leadership that you have showed and uh, and the remarkable job you have done to make sure our students and teachers and the public are, are protected. Uh, I just don't know of a thing I, anyone could add that you haven't done that uh, and the mass notifications that we receive on our emails uh, from your staff and and your mass notification that you personally did to the parents and the commissioners uh, is remarkable. Y'all just thought of everything and to make sure our students and parents are safe. And thank you so much for that leadership. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Creasy. I tell you, we've got a second to none staff uh, from the directors all the way down, like you say, the custodial staff to the cafeteria workers to everybody. I got to ride a bus the first three days, and that was just amazing to me. We've got some tremendous bus companies out there, and you know, they've been in our school system for many, many years, and they're embedded. They want to make sure our students are safe, even on the bus, and. Yes, we are blessed in Anderson County. Uh, I'm just blessed to work for Anderson County Schools and glad they let me be part of it. But we've got an amazing staff out there. And I would ask all the uh, parents, you know, if they do have some concerns, they know how to get a hold of me. And we're trying to make sure that we can, we can't fix everything, you know. Uh, if I could, I'd get a cure for this virus, but we can sure do our best to keep our students safe and make sure they're still on track to be whatever they want to be when they graduate at Anderson County Schools. So thank you for all that. Dr. Perry, thank you. Uh, I'm not gonna ask you for a reply right now. I just wanna go ahead and drop the bug. You probably know what I'm gonna ask. It's early on and we got a major disease we're fighting with COVID, but uh, next meeting I'd like to get follow up on when we're gonna do the flu shots and if that's gonna be able to be done. And you've always been a leader in that too. So uh, I'll look forward to those comments later. You got a lot of other things on your plate besides talking about that. So thank you and look forward to that football game this weekend and everybody working well together and celebrating together. And uh, if you need anything from us, let us know. But yes, and we, uh, Anna is already, Anna Hurd is already working on getting those scheduled. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right, we'll move on. I don't see any other questions. You have a good evening, Dr. Parrott, and thanks again. Okay, uh, County Mayor, you're up. I have nothing on my, uh, no action items tonight, Mr. Chairman. Well, that makes it pretty easy. <laughs> I will uh, say that the first like, time in eight years of being the county mayor that I've been able to eat chips while I participated in a county commission meeting. Well, congratulations. I didn't even notice. I my husband deliver some uh, ruffles and French onion dip. So that's a good that's a good combination. I, I could go for some of that. <laughs> no. Thanks for holding out on us. Yes. Tell me we appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Hey, quick question I have, uh, and it's not a problem. I just wanted to get your feedback on, uh, on today's call-in show. I went for the last time and I just, uh, there was a call in about the senior center as far as the bids going out. And I should have asked Catherine earlier, but I figured you could probably answer that question. Not sure you heard it, but there is a, a young lady that called in asking about what's the process or the hang up with the bids for the senior center remodeling. Thought okay. I'd um, well, we we are approving. We had to uh, submit the plans for approval um, locally, and then also to the state fire marshal. There was some gray area there, so uh, we got those plans approved. And we are Catherine has been ready. Catherine Oshmeri in purchasing has been ready whenever we want. In fact, she reached out. I uh, think on Thursday or Friday, and even asked, you know. Or are we ready? 
We are. Um, we have one last amendment we have to make. So we're actually going to meet virtually uh, with the architect on Thursday. And then once that's uh, approved, we'll get that put out to bid. Um, so I know that um, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't on the radio today. I had a meeting uh, with a couple other mayors. We're trying to work on that train project. But um, there has been some confusion thinking, you know, oh, the senior center is not open because, you know, of this or that. The senior center cannot be open um, because senior senior centers cannot be open during COVID. And so that is per the governor. So even if everything was ready right now, it still could not be open and functioning. So Sheree is doing the work uh, that has to be done per the Older Americans Act and some of the one-on-one -on -one federal stuff and, and hooking people up with programs. But um, I would say everything will be wrapped up and out uh, to Catherine on Friday will be the final step. Thank you, Mayor, for that feedback. Appreciate it. Any other questions for the mayor? Hearing none, we'll move on. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Law Director, enjoy them chips. Go ahead, Law Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's As always, it's my honor to be with you and the other members of County Commission tonight. Um, Referencing my written report to the county commission, uh, does anybody have any questions on the contract approvals under section A? Hearing none, I'll move on. Uh, the new lawsuit, uh, another uh, inmate medical claim. Uh, I want you to understand these are really not against, although we're named as a party defendant, they're more uh, against Southern Health Partners, and that's our contractor that provides medical care at the detention facility. I review each of these claims, and um, uh, I believe our people at the jail are second to none. Uh, they are uh, super people, highly trained, and I don't believe Anderson County has any liability on any of these. We've been very successful in getting um, a lot of these pro se complaints dismissed immediately. They're filed in federal court. The federal judges really have no tolerance for some of these. And uh, as you can see from the updates, uh, we've got three there or two that have been dismissed that are uh, all similar. Um, but uh, if anybody has any questions on section B or C, I'll be glad to entertain those questions for you. Uh, the one item I do have, um, is section D, the charter commission appointments for the vacancies in district one and district two. I told you last month that uh, we lost our chairman, uh, VL Stone Cipher, and of course, uh, Commissioner Mark Alderson. Um, we need to replace those. Um, we do have an application for uh, Chairman Stone Cipher. He would like to take um, Commissioner Alderson's spot. He has moved into district two from district one and He's available to take that appointment. Um, and then um, we've got, to my knowledge, one other applicant in District 1, that's Commissioner Chuck Fritz, who brings a lot of experience in county government. Uh, Chuck's been here on county commission for almost as long as I've been here. He's done a fantastic job, and he knows a lot of the legacy history of the issues facing Anderson County. But um, I do want to remind you that we can take nominations from the floor tonight. So if anybody wants to nominate somebody from the floor or if any of the individuals that are viewing this online, um, we're, well, we're certainly welcome any nominations from anybody for these two important positions. I do want to remind you, though, that we need to fill these positions as quickly as possible. The Charter Commission wants to complete its duties as quickly as we possibly can. So if possible, I'd like to fill these vacancies tonight. Let's move forward with our next regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the Charter Commission appointments for vacancies District 1 and District 2? Otherwise, if you know, I'll need a vote. I got a question, Jay. I, I, we have a motion in the second, and I'll get to that in a minute. But before we go to the motion, I wanted to ask, uh, is there any type of procedure we need to do before we take a motion? Should the motion be to accept the nominees in front of us? Is there any other process? I guess what I'm trying to say is, should we open it up the floor right now before we yes, take sir. on them? 
Go ahead. Yes, sir. That, that's always our procedure in the past is if anybody, uh, any member of our body that has a nominee, uh, they're welcome to bring those forward right now. Or if anybody that's viewing online, if they have a nominee, we can take those up. All we have is the two individuals that have submitted resumes through the normal application process, to my knowledge. And we've had uh, the proper notification, as always, in the paper. And Yes, uh, Annette's done a very good job. She made that pro uh, notification immediately. Um, I think it was in the paper the very next week. Uh, I know she was in contact with my office the very next day after our last county commission meeting. And these positions are required to be filled by the commission or appointed, rather. Yes, that's correct by statute. Okay, uh, Commissioner Anderson, I'm gonna, let me go ahead, and Commissioner Anderson. You may have a point before I go to meet and and get a motion. Go ahead. Are you muted, there, Commissioner Anderson? Sorry, I was muted. I, I was just going to say there's no one in the audience. There's not not anybody wanting to nominate from the courthouse. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Is there anybody online that would like to present themselves for consideration? Okay, uh, I'm going to move over to Commissioner Mead, sir. You have a motion. Go ahead with your motion. Yes, I would. I would like to make a motion to accept to, to nominate uh, Chuck Fritz for District One and VL Stone Cipher for District 2. And I was gonna say, and you need to open this up to the floor to the audience, but you've already done that. Thank you, thank you, uh, Commissioner Mead. Uh, that is your motion, and it is seconded by Commissioner Smallridge. Is that correct, Commissioner Smallridge? Yes. <laughs> thank you, sir. We have a question, Commissioner Fritz, go ahead. If you're gonna vote, I'm gonna abstain with calls. Understood. Is that the proper procedure, Jay, I imagine for Commissioner Fritz? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else before we go to the board and vote? Any comments? Commissioner McCamey, go ahead, buddy. Uh, those were two nominations. I make a motion that nomination cease and that they be elected by acclamation. So, Jay, would we need to do away with this other motion that's already on the floor? How would that work? Uh, no, sir, you, you need to vote uh, each of these individuals individually. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, you need to take a vote on each of these individuals. What about McCamey's motion for acclamation? Uh, I don't think that's proper here. It's filling of a vacancy, although um, I always yield to Robert. Uh, to be uh, uh, on the safe side, I'd like to see a motion for each spot. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Mead, would you mind just taking one at a time and, and, and then we'll make another motion for the other? Uh, that, open. Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll make a, initially a motion to to uh, elect Chuck Fritz or appoint a, a Chuck Fritz as the Charter Commission member for District 1. Okay. And Commissioner Smallridge, is that okay with you, sir? Right. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner McCamey, back at you. Okay. We need the nomination and then we vote on the nomination. Uh, so evidently the motion that Steve is trying to make is to nominate these, this individual, right? That's correct. That's well, actually, fine. the motion is we've already they've already been nominated. I'm making a motion to appoint them in accordance with state law. Well, the vote is what will appoint them if they get nine votes. So yes, let's, actually, let's actually eight, eight votes because there's only 15 members voting. Yeah. Let's go ahead and the wording needs to be nominate. And uh, but I, I okay. do understand what Commissioner Mead is saying. If that's okay with Commissioner Mead and Commissioner, yes, you can change the word to Molly. nominate. That's fine. Okay, so the motion from Commissioner Mead is to nominate uh, Commissioner Chuck Fritz to District One Open Charter Seat, and it was seconded by Commissioner Smallridge. Correct. Okay, is that yes. me? Is that right, Jay? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Any other discussion on that motion? Let's go to the board.
Commissioner Jamison. Uh, motion passes 15 yes, zero no's, one abstain. Uh, motion carries for the nomination of Commissioner Fritz. And I guess we'll come back to take the actual vote, Jay. This is just for nomination. No, that'll do it right there. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm making things confusing. No, you're, you're, you're fine. We need district two now, please. Uh, Commissioner Meredith, state your motion, sir. Yes. I'd like to nominate, uh, B.L. Stonecipher. I have a motion to nominate B.L. Stonecipher for District 2, uh, seconded by Commissioner Jamison. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Jamison. Any uh, discussion, questions? Let's go to the board. Motion passes 16 yes, zero no's. Uh, both appointments have been made. Is, is that correct, Jay? Correct. No, you need one, one more vote now to appoint okay. the, both the nominees to the uh, specific seats, District 1 and District 2. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Commissioner Scott, go ahead. Yes, sir. Making a motion to appoint both of the uh, nominees. To District 1 and District 2. Thank you. Yes, sir, to District 1 and District 2. Thank you. Commissioner Denenberg, you second that motion? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Fritz, go ahead. I'll abstain with calls. Understood. Okay. Any other discussion, comments, questions on this motion before us? This is to actually appoint these two individuals now. First votes were to nominate, as Commissioner McCamey alluded to, and Jay Yeager, and now we are actually going to vote to put him in those capacities. Let's go to the board. Motion passes 15 yes, zero no's, uh, one abstention uh, for cause. And uh, thank you, Commissioner Fritz and uh, Mr. Stone Cypher for stepping up for these open vacancies in the Charter Commission. and. I'd also like to say uh, thoughts and prayers go out to Mark Alderson and his family, just always thinking about them, him and his family and uh, hope everything's going well for them. Uh, Commissioner Mead. I just want to make sure that our discussion about closing nominations after the two uh, people were nominated was sufficient to meet the legal requirement for having, you know, officially closed nominations. Because we did discuss it, but then we kind of came back to it. Uh, Jay, are we okay? Yeah, we we had nobody nominated from the floor to even be considered. Um, just a second issue there. Uh, if Commissioner Fritz and VL, I know, is always listening to these, uh, stop by Jeff Cole's office and take the oath of office as soon as possible. Jeff has those forms available, and I'd uh, be glad to administer that. But congratulations to both these individuals and. Glad certainly to get VL back on board. He's been a fantastic chairman. And um, but anyway, uh, let's get started. Let's get these oaths finished with Jeff and uh, we'll move forward with our next meeting as regularly scheduled. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next item I have um, that was is not on your agenda and we just got noticed today, myself and Annette, we have a constable vacancy in District 1. Now that district is a little bit larger than what we call our District 1 for County Commission. Nobody ran in that seat. Uh, that was the seat that's vacated by Jennings Faust, a long-term constable, it's done a fantastic job over the years and we'll deeply miss Jennings. But we do have a vacancy there. I'd like to make that announcement. And um, if anybody's listening, if anybody on county commission knows of anybody that may be interested or anybody in law enforcement may be interested in that, uh, I'd like to take this up next month. So I do need a motion to go ahead and advertise that vacancy for constable in uh, constable district, district one. That still is a line, sort of, it's a little bit broader jurisdiction or geographic ju jurisdiction. Uh, it's the PAL, South Clinton, Claxton area. Uh, but uh, I do need a motion to go ahead and uh, Annette and myself will get the notices started for that vacancy and we'll try to take that up in September as quickly as possible. Thank you, Jay. And yes, Jennings Spouse has been 
an amazing individual for our county and I appreciate his service and, and all he's done for Anderson County. Uh, he certainly will be missed and I respect his uh, decision to, 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 to move on, I guess, and enjoy life a little bit, but uh, gonna miss him. I will have a motion, Commissioner Mead. Yes, yeah, a motion to commence the act the required uh, steps to fill the constable vacancy district one. Thank you, Commissioner Mead. Second by Commissioner Meredith. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Meredith. Uh, any other discussion on this item? Let's go to the board. Motion passes 16 to zero uh, to allow law director and Annette to post this uh, opening and then report back next month. Anything else, Jay? I think you're muted, Jay. Just wanted to mention how proud I am of our team here. Um, talking with some of my peers across the state and the County Attorneys Association, uh, they're having a lot of problems uh, with COVID response. And I just look at back at what our folks have done, everything from the great job the mayor's done, our county commission, uh, look at the fantastic job Roger Lloyd and his staff have done of cleaning this courthouse, the sheriff's deputies who greet these people with respect at the door, ask them to do the temperature check and um, ask the relevant questions. Uh, our elected officials, um, it, it's just been a total team response. I'm very proud of everybody that's been involved in this. Uh, the schools absolutely have a model plan. Uh, very proud of what Dr. Parrott has put together, but um, we can all pat ourselves on the back. And um, if you do see some of these people that are on the front lines, our deputies, our EMS personnel, certainly Roger and his crew in the courthouse, please thank them. Yeah. Uh, they do a fantastic job. They've set up um, all the cleaning, all these plexiglass shields that we have, and they worked overtime. And Kim and HR has done a fantastic job. Uh, you don't see all the work that she does. Uh, uh, speaking with the concerns from our employees about this. And Brian, of course, has worked overtime trying to set up these virtual meetings, but we've had a total team approach. It's worked well, and we've come through this as, as good as anybody in the state that I know of. And uh, uh, I was talking to um, a couple of my, my partners across the state and talked about what Commissioner Denenberg and Commissioner Isbell did and Tim's idea to put the ultraviolet lights inside the HVAC and people just aren't aware of this stuff and we're all over it and we're uh, doing a fantastic job way out ahead of many of the counties of larger size than us and I'm sure the mayor can concur in that too as she speaks with the county mayors across the state but I'm very proud of everyone. Uh, one last thing, the Knox Energy case is coming to trial on September 3rd. That's a very important case for for us that we have a lot of money on the line in this and of course uh, if you recall that's the oil and gas um, uh, assessment of personal property there I'll keep you updated on that case um, we'll have our hearing September 3rd I don't expect a decision to be handed down that day there will probably be post hearing briefs due but anyway uh, I'll keep you posted on that that case it means a lot to this county and the three other counties that are uh, involved in active uh, pumping of oil and gas uh, uh, here around uh, this area. Really, it's just Morgan, Scott, Campbell, and Anderson County that are in the business of extraction of uh, uh, oil and natural gas. But anyway, that's all I have, unless somebody has questions, and I'll be glad to entertain any of those questions for you tonight. Any other questions for Jay? Thank you, Jay. Appreciate all you do and your staff. and. Appreciate those comments. That's very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a Have great night. Evening. You too, buddy. Okay, next uh, we're going to move on to the committee board report operations committee report by Chairman Isabel. Go ahead, Chairman Isabel. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Yeager made a motion. to send on the full commission for the other commissioners to have their say so and maybe approve the second Oak Ridge commissioner for the committee. Commissioner Meade second the motion, motion passed.
Is there any action to take? Mr. Chairman, I guess the action would be to have a uh, Oak Ridge commissioner maybe volunteer for this service. Commissioner Mead, go ahead. In the meeting, I volunteered and I again volunteered to, to serve on that committee. Seeing no motions, I guess we'll move on, Mr. Chairman. Uh, well, go ahead. I Mr. could read the, the, the motion that came out of operations and then went to full commission. And that, that's what we did in operations. And then on number 25, going back to uh, full commission, and Commissioner Scott made a motion to refer to operations committee discussion of which Anders County commissioners put on subcommittee general sessions to MOU, second by Commissioner Denenberg. And then it, it uh, that passed unanimous. And then back in the operations committee, uh, what was <coughs> passed out of there, Commissioner McCamey made a motion for the General Sessions Court to MOU. The County Commission have a subcommittee appointed that the County Mayor, Oak Ridge City Mayor, Commissioner McCamey, two Oak Ridge Commissioners and two Oak Ridge City Councilmen to return by the City Mayor. Go over the information Commissioner McCamey has, look what we are paying, say to my Commissioner Mead, motion passed for roll call vote. That's what was sent on to full commission. Go ahead, Commissioner McCamey. Mr. Chairman, if uh, no other commissioner from the city, I mean, from Oak Ridge wants to serve, then I would uh, go ahead and, and say that the committee is finalized. Mr. Denenberg. I was not aware that there was a second commissioner being looked for. Of course, I <clears throat> was hoping that um, one of the others would step forward, but um, <clears throat> if necessary, I will put my name forward as well. So Chairman Isabel, do we have a required amount now that was needed we do we do if you'll accept uh commissioner denenberg's um commitment okay um maybe if you could tell us what that committee would look like and who's on it and then maybe there's a motion in a second so we can take action or not okay, okay. uh commissioner mccamey County Mayor, Oak Ridge City uh, Mayor, two Oak Ridge Commissioners, which would be Commissioner Mead and Commissioner Denenberg, and two Oak Ridge City Councilmen to be determined by the City Mayor. So the only ones I can give you is the ones that uh, we have that's volunteered tonight along with the uh, County Mayor and Commissioner McCain. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we go ahead and approve the committee as presented and that uh, the county law director and the Oak Ridge uh, city attorney be appointed as uh, ex officio members of that committee. Okay, go ahead and Hit your motion button there, Robert, and then uh, see if we get a second. Okay, okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion before we go take a vote? Seeing none, let's go. Uh, yes would to be approved. The member has announced of that committee. No, and obviously to be against over the board. Mm 
Commissioner Vowles out of the room. Uh, he'll probably be coming back. I hate to leave him out of the vote. Um, I'm sure he'll be right back. Yeah. Oh, we're waiting on him to come back, Mr. Chairman. There's a couple of things I wanted to mention at the very end of, of my uh, report. And that was to say thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the signs that you uh, got for District 4 in the area of 116 about the free COVID testing. There's many of the people that live over on the mountain in that area that doesn't get to Clinton, that don't have uh, internet, that don't have cable TV, but they do travel the road. So I really appreciate what you've done there. And to uh, Dr. Bunick, she was going to speak at operations committee meeting, uh, but she was tied up with some other things. She, I mean, she's a real warrior. And Oak Ridge Rotary Club, I found out that Oak Ridge Rotary Club also, uh, they donate money to the Bryceville area for uh, food for the students as well. And uh, I appreciate the kind words. Uh, but I, all that thanks goes to you for bringing up the idea for those signs in Bryceville and uh, also to Gary Long for quickly jumping on top of that. And I appreciate him and I know you do as well. Gary Long the one who made that happen, so thank you. Oh, he did, he did a great job. And he sent me the pictures and I was very proud of that. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am, go ahead, Commissioner Scott. So, so we're waiting for one person to come back so that he can place a vote? I mean, majority uh, of the time, we would just go past that person. If they're not there, they're not there. Well, it's the pleasure of this body. I was just trying to make sure we had a, enough to, to vote. I imagine he stepped out for a drink of water or something. I didn't wanna exclude him, but uh, we can certainly, it's the pleasure of the body. What would the body I like? Mean, there's, 15 people voting. I mean, if that's the case, let's take a five or a 10 minute break for everybody to go get a glass of water. Let's vote, I'm good, let's roll. Thank you. Go ahead, uh, Brian, roll the vote. We'll count Mr. Val as uh, absent for the vote. Now, before we take the vote, what's required to pass this? Just majority and with uh, Val missing, uh, Commissioner Yeager, what's the number we gotta have? Do you know it? I, um, I, I will say nine. Okay. That is correct. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's uh, turn the board. Motion passes, nine yes, six no's. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. You may be on mute, there you go, thank you. Mr. McCamey made a motion to allow the planting of a yellow rose bush on the courthouse grounds. Commissioner Mead seconded the motion. Motion passed unanimous for the full commission for approval. I have a motion by Commissioner Mead, seconded by Commissioner Denenberg to support this motion for yellow rose bush. Uh, Commissioner Mead, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? No, this was just a commemoration of the right for women to vote. And uh, it was brought in by the mayor, and I think it's an appropriate thing to do. And there's a spot out front where it can go. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you giving additional information on that reason for that yellow rose bush women's suffrage rights. Uh, Commissioner Denenberg, you second that, obviously. I absolutely do. Just keep in mind, <clears throat> roses are very sensitive as to what side of the building they're planted on. Sounds like you could be a, a help in that. Right. I don't uh, know, I'm not. <laughs> not volunteering, uh, thank the, you. The no. planter gets full sun almost all day, so it should be good. And they don't need it in the afternoon. And I'd like to thank the mayor for bringing this to our attention. Uh, uh, this is a, a worthy cause. Again, yellow rose bush out in the front of the courthouse and one of the planters 
uh, that will rep represent the women's right to vote. Uh, any other questions? Let's go to the board and vote. Sixteen yes. Motion passes unanimously. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner McKamey made a made a motion to approve the Anderson County Care and Control Vehicle Policy. Commissioner Meade second the motion. Motion passed forward to full commission for approval. Do we have a motion by Commissioner Merritt to accept? Yes. Commissioner Merritt is seconded by Commissioner Meade. Yes. Thank you. And just to add a little bit to this for the folks at home, uh, this allows, uh, for instance, the dog um, officer the, uh, to the right to where if a, a call comes in on the weekend, he can respond without having to come all the way back to the courthouse. Uh, this isn't for them to just take uh, the car at their pleasure, but rather to be more responsive. So uh, that's why the motion passed, I think, unanimously. And uh, does anybody have any other questions or any comments? And thank you, Mayor, for bringing it to our attention. Let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously 16-0. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Meade made a motion to approve the Industrial Development Board Resolution number 20-08-820 to establish a new matrix for pilot agreements. Commissioner McCamey second the motion. Motion passed forward to full commission for approval. Mr. McCamey, your motion supports that? Yes. Thank you. Seconded by Commissioner Meredith. Yes. Any discussion, any questions on the motion at hand for uh, the approval of the Industrial Development Board Resolution number 20-8-820? Seeing no other discussion, let's go to the board and vote. Motion passes unanimously. Anything else, Mr. Chairman of the Operations Committee? Chairman, these are not action items, but I'm sure that they'll be of interest to the public. Under old business, there's an update on the East Wolf Valley Convenience Center. And then there's a possibility of a grant for Claxton Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I didn't know if you want to have any discussion on either one of those items. Um, I think Mr. McCamey and uh, Jeff Trabaca have the issue of the East Wolf Valley uh, Convenience Center. I think Mr. McCamey is um, in discussions with some folks. He might want to share some more information on that. Uh, Mr. McCamey, did you have anything, Commissioner? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've just been assured that uh, they're working on uh, a sales agreement uh, on the piece of property that we've been looking at. Uh, should be should know something this coming week. Uh, Commissioner McCamey, I appreciate your efforts and what you've done. Um, if this works out, it'll be a, a, a great move for us as a county and especially uh, their District 1 and East Wolf Valley Convenience Center. Uh, Commissioner Creasy. Yes, um, I was trying to remember our operations committee discussions on the uh, creating some plan for continuing our commission meetings in person uh, should the governor not let uh, or should the governor let his order expire and i think we agreed in the operations that we were asking the mayor if she could work on some sort of uh, plan for us if I, am i remembering correctly uh, chairman isabel The, uh, what we you know we had discussions about quarterly and location larger than commission room, and one of the things I actually spoke with Brian and with uh, the mayor about, and uh, Commissioner Val is actually by changing this room 312, giving the square footage and dividing it by the 16 commissioners and the support staff, that would give us adequate uh, room just in here 
without having to move all the cameras and, and all that, because that was one of the concerns that our IT department had is if we had to move that to a different location, that we wouldn't be able to, to quite do the meetings as we have now. But uh, uh, Brian Shakeney said that everything's on track to, to try to what we would have to do to actually make this room here uh, to within our social distancing requirements. That answer your question, is there Commissioner Creasy? I'm a little disappointed. I was uh, hoping we could, uh, if I remember, uh, it seemed like the mayor said she was going to look at other places we could possibly meet. Uh, I think we should continue this discussion. I personally feel the, the commission room is just not large enough for to continue meeting in there. Uh, I know we the we have done everything we can to make it as safe as we can, but is it really safe? Uh, I, I feel that it isn't. Uh, maybe we could open all the doors and and create some sort of airflow, but I, I feel that 16 commissioners and the staff and any visitors and speakers we have. Uh, in that room for more than just a few minutes would be uh, detrimental or risky. Uh, I personally feel that, that uh, without proof otherwise, uh, that's how I feel. Commissioner, uh, I think we need some sort of... Brian both are looking into other things, but this was just one of the things that we talked about. And with the steps that Roger has taken here in the courthouse, especially with the UV, if if you've been watching any of the news or following any of the things that's going on, you see more and more about the UV lights and, and how it's actually working probably better than anything that's out there right now as far as preventive. And uh, what we have here in our ventilation system is cleaning out 98% of the air, 98.8. Uh, and Jay's done a lot of research on that as well. But I think that uh, Brian and the mayor is actually looking at some other, you know, possibilities, but this is one of the possibilities. But the seating would have to be changed in here and the pews would have to be remo removed and it would be like a big circle, basically. Yes, and uh, um, Roger and I did look at that. And Commissioner Creasy, I don't think we really came to any decision there, but I did reach out to Chairman Wandell and offered to come up with some options for you all and some contingency plans. And so I am working on that, looking at uh, perhaps some other locations that wouldn't involve too much work, um, but it is it, it would be a hurdle in terms of the electronics. But we are we are looking at some other things for you all. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Commissioner Creasy, for those comments. I guess one thing I wanted to ask Jay Yeager, um, you know, obviously we have some commissioners that have some health concerns, not just personally, but with loved ones and other concerns, and and I respect that, and I know we all do, but. I guess if we have to go back to in person and there's a handful of commissioners that just do not feel safe to come back, Jay. Um, and again, I understand they want to participate and they want to, we're not going to have the ability for those handful to, to do anything virtual because it's going to come down to the TCA code that the governor issues and, and all that kind of stuff. Is, is that kind of correct? Yes, sir. I think you're exactly correct. If the governor's order is uh, left to expire, then we're stuck with Tennessee state statutes that will make um, all of us, our whole body, meet uh, at one time at the courthouse or whatever alternative location the mayor has in mind. Um, we won't be able to make exceptions because those exceptions are not embodied in the statute. So. Um, if the governor's order is 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 not renewed, um, 
we'll have to deal with Tennessee code and that means everybody will have to attend these meetings unless there is some kind of exception uh, granted by the governor in a, a new order. Thank you, okay. sir. You're correct. No, no, thank you. And let me ask you this question. If hypothetically he states that we got to come back to face-to-face -face meetings and there's three or five commissioners that just do not feel comfortable, uh, we, we're, we don't, I mean, it's okay for them not to come based on their concerns for health and uh, there will be no action taken against them. And uh, is that correct statement? Yes, sir. It's it's correct. Um, uh, the idea, rumor that floated that if you miss three meetings, that your off county commission is not true. Or well, we've got one committee or two committees that have that rule, but it doesn't affect county commission. They're just absent, unfortunately. And I do understand uh, some of them with those concerns. I, I wish there was something we could do, and I, I wish the governor would take that issue up, if not for the whole body, for those that are at high risk. But uh, Yes, better well said, high, high risk. Let me, Jay, would it be possible with those commissioners that didn't come and we had to meet that they could uh, pass on their uh, information concerns? And obviously we can't vote for them, but we could certainly speak for them. Uh, is, is, and, I'm, and I know I'm dancing on a very cross dicey line here, but I mean, it, it would, could those individuals pass their information on, for example, either to the mayor or to the chairman uh, in that capacity and say, hey, here's my thoughts, my concerns on the agenda as it comes up. Obviously, I'm not gonna be, be there, but could they provide that to those individuals and, and would that be appropriate or is that crossing a line? I think that's appropriate. Um, I think it's probably uh, one of those situations where we don't want to send out an email and get a dialogue or a debate going on, but if right. they want to send their a position to the chair or to my, myself, um, yes. I, I don't see that to be a problem, but um, they won't be allowed to vote, sir. Correct. Okay. I'll be quiet. Commissioner Scott and then Commissioner Me. No, well, Mr. Chairman, you were just, you know, basically tackling at least half the questions and or comments that I have. Um, I mean, to ask me, you know, what my medical issue is would be a HIPAA violation, um, you know, for anybody um, to be concerned along those lines. So... I appreciate that you have brought it up tonight and addressed it to this extent. Um, Jay, I appreciate your input and we'll just see what's gonna happen hereafter. But I still, you know, throwing it out there like I have since March every month, uh, I do not feel comfortable coming to any of the court or to the courthouse or any of the county buildings at this time. Thank you. Yes, and we certainly respect that position. Nobody's gonna ask for health information. That's not gonna happen. And we respect what you're saying and we all understand. Thank you, Thank Commissioner. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Commissioner Mead. Yeah, I think that the last thing that the law director said was really the most important. Anyone that doesn't attend the meeting would not be allowed to vote. But I don't see why we couldn't have a meeting just like the one we had tonight for those people that were uh, that cannot attend, they could still have an input. They could listen to everything. They just couldn't vote. Uh, Jay, wouldn't that work? Uh, that's an interesting point. Uh, let me take a look at that. You may be correct, Commissioner Mead, um, uh, but the vote is actually the important part that would be prohibited. But um, that's interesting. You're saying that um, they'd still be allowed to provide input remotely, but no vote. Yeah, because That's it would all be it would all be in a public forum. So it, there wouldn't be any, I think, uh, violation of the Public Meetings Act. They just wouldn't be able to vote because they're required to be there to vote. Yes, sir. We'll be glad to take a look at that for you. Thank you so much for the idea. Thank you, Steve. Uh, Commissioner Mead. Uh, Commissioner Isabel, did you have any other things? That, uh, I apologize if I jumped, over, jumped around there. No, actually, I think what we could probably do is is make a motion that we could do a resolution uh, or a letter from this body uh, that would go to our state legislatures that uh, would actually 
try to provide for our at-risk members to continue on, even if, you know, if, if the governor's dead set on, on resuming that, maybe he'll give in some for our at-risk members all across the, you know, the state. Uh, I like that idea. Well, let's make it in a motion. Hit that button, Jerry. Commissioner Isabel hit the button, seconded by Commissioner Scott. Yes, sir. Uh, I think that's a great idea and great discussion, everyone. Uh, any other discussion on that motion? Uh, Commissioner Isabel suggested sending the letter to the state uh, addressing the, the high risk commissioners we have and uh, asking for some type of guidance on that if we should go back face to face meetings next month. Let's go to the board. Commissioner Smallridge. Sorry, I thought we were done and I disconnected. <laughs> I vote for the motion. <laughs> you know us, we are, we're never done. <laughs> Do you want to give a voice, voice vote? Yes, yes, I vote yes. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's, uh, if we could, Jay, if it's all right, we'll notate uh, Commissioner Smallridge's yes. Uh, there'll be 13 yes, two are absent, uh, one did not vote. Is this okay, Jay? Yes, uh, as long as we've got a roll call vote there, uh, I think it's appropriate and it's in line with the governor's orders. I do have one question though, uh, who is, do you want me to write this letter? I'll be glad to assist. Commissioner Isabel, you made the motion, sir. Yes, sir. Did you? Did you say, yeah? Uh, you're muted. You're still muted. Okay, Chairman Wandale. Uh, there you go. You was muted. Go ahead. Yes, please. For Jay. Thank you, Commissioner Isabel. Chairman Isabel. Any other discussions? Uh, anything else, uh, Chairman Isabel? Mr. Chairman, I have that concludes a, the operations committee report and thank you for all your service as well for the last couple of years. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, was that you, Commissioner Denenberg? No, it's actually, it's Jeff Travalka with Solid Waste Department. Yes, Jeff, go ahead, sir. I couldn't chime in quick enough on the uh, update on the Wolf Valley Con Convenience Center. I have an item and I don't know whether it's appropriate to raise it here or under old business or even new business as to the continuation of using the recycling compactor at Wolf Valley for garbage for another 30 days. The numbers have not changed. We're still having a lot of hauls, about eight every week and 340 tons for last month. And my recommendation is that we continue to uh, use that compactor for garbage for another 30 days. I don't know whether that needs a vote or not. Commissioner Fritz, your motion, sir. Uh, that we continue using that as a uh, for uh, trash for the next 30 days. Seconded by Commissioner Mead. Thank you, sir. Uh, any discussion on that? Jeff, thank you for bringing it to our attention. Uh, yep, thank you, sir. No problem. Any discussion on that? Let's go to the board and vote. This is to continue another 30 days of using the recyclable container for trash due to the COVID-19 increase in tonnage at that location. Motion passes uh, 15 yes, uh, one absent. Uh, Jeff, you still there? Yes, sir. Under old business, we are now. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I had a constituent call and I know you were gonna work on it. Did you get any feedback on that donation bin outside of the facility by chance? Uh, I sent my work, the litter crew out there to clean that up today. Um, I have not gotten a hold of 
the company that operates that they actually are out of Georgia. Okay. So I'll have to try and get to them. The email is really the only way I have that's a reliable way to get to him. Jeff, thank you for doing that. I just want everybody yeah. at home to, to know that's not part of the solid waste program and 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 your responsibility and it's it's something that we do to help I guess a charitable organization out and unfortunately they haven't I'm sure it's due to COVID but I, I want to thank you for being responsive and getting out there and cleaning that up even though it's not your obligation thank you for doing that and I know Commissioner Fritz appreciates it as well you're welcome sir thank you thank you I appreciate the constituent that called and told us about that um Anything else under old business? Uh, while we're on old business, is there any department heads that are online that like to chime in or share if you do? I'd like to give this chance. Hearing none, we'll move on to- Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, my my tablet's rebooted, but um, I, I had one thing for old business. Yes. Uh, Walking Horse Trail in Andersonville. I talked to Miss Marin, and she was. And I know Commissioner White's already gone. I thought maybe this might need to go back to the road committee or something. But um, she was just wondering if there was any any new movement on that. She said the last she'd heard from Gary Long, um, it was still needing to go out to bid, or maybe there wasn't enough money in the budget to have that paved. So I was just hoping for an update on that. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, any updates, Jay, or anyone? I'm sorry, that's the first I've heard of it. I, I thought that issue was completely resolved um, over a year ago. Um, that's all new to me. I'm sorry. Uh, and I think Jer uh, Commissioner White has already gone. The last time we addressed this at Road Committee, I thought that was the last thing I heard as well, was they were still looking at some final numbers. And then I think moving, moving a utility might've been a part of the issue as well, or, or some kind of connection, I can't remember. But yeah, we may have to send that back to road or highway or just reach out to Gary, which I'm happy to do. Mayor, that'd be great if you wouldn't mind. Okay. Uh, that'd be good. Anything else on that, Commissioner Anderson? Ed, thank you. Hey, thank you for bringing it up. Appreciate it. Anyone else under no old business? I didn't mean to cut anybody short. Okay, we'll move to new business. New business, we have a purchase agreement, Amplify, Terms and Conditions Schools, or did we already take care of that, Jay? Uh, not that I know of, but I didn't hear Catherine mention it, but it is listed as new business, sir. Okay. Catherine, mm -hmm. Catherine said just to disregard that. Okay, thank you, Annette. Man, there's a net. Listen to Net Pruitt on there. Like it. All right. Uh, we'll just disregard that. Any other new business commissioners, mayor, Jay, department heads? Hearing no new business uh, and no business before us, I call this meeting adjourned. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. Got a motion, got a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, good. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Appreciate it. Well done.